Okay, well, well, this is how you do a, a YouTube intro. Not that I've, I, I do one maybe once a year, but, but here we go. Yeah. Uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the... <laughs> one second. Welcome to the, <laughs> Welcome to the Sailing <laughs> Skill. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm Noam, uh, otherwise known as Screetmange, and this is... Hello, I'm Gentle Tractor, also just known as Gentle Tractor, so there we go. <laughs> Okay, uh, so uh, before we begin this ramble, please note that there is a 15-minute overview of what the sailing skill is. Um, please go watch that first, or else you're going to be completely lost with, with no context for what we talk about uh, here. Uh, do note that this is going to be a pretty freeform ramble. Uh, there's not really a set formula to this. We're just going to be playing it by ear. Uh, if it's incoherent, that's the way it is. Um, yeah, otherwise, please enjoy. Uh, so, how are you doing, General Tractor? I mean, things in the wider old school community have been heating up a bit on the old new skills front. <laughs> Obviously, ever since the passing of the poll, with a, quite a staggering margin as well, 80%. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and more recently, at least as of the time of recording this, we've had some further in-game polls and a survey went out just very recently as well, came mm -hmm. to a close that we've yet to see the full kind of results of. But that's kind of pushing things in a direction that's quite interesting too seeing a few of the various player skill ideas getting floated around oh yeah um and yeah things are kind of like picking up pace a little bit and obviously well that leads us to where we are today which is <laughs> picking on a specific skill obviously the quite iconic and infamous at this point in time sailing um and yeah trying to expand to that a bit more i don't know whether i should perhaps turn around and throw a question to you gnome about sure. sailing in particular and I'm going to stress right off the bat here, if you're perhaps listening to this at home and you've seen things like the, the plugin that's been produced, I want to give massive shout out and round of applause to Gnome because this is like his work. It's all his baby. This is a, a phenomenal amount of effort that's uh, been put into this. So I want to give you massive props first and foremost. Um, oh, but yeah, maybe you. I could ask you a question as to um, yeah where you kind of first decided to tackle this in such a way and why sailing? Why a plug-in? I don't know if you're interested in giving a little bit of detail information on that before we kind of delve into the depths of this sailing skill pitch and everything surrounding it and beyond. Yeah, so, um, yeah. <laughs> you know, sailing is one of those things that, well, you would know better than me. You've been around the game a couple of years longer than I have. Uh, but you know sure. that sailing's been this, this permanent sticking point in people's minds for, you know, since the 1970s, pretty much. Uh, yeah. <laughs> people have been have been dreaming of this uh, ethereal sailing skill. And, um, you know, it really came to a head for old school back in 2015, where uh, Jagex proposed, um, they, they proposed something, and then it, it failed a poll. And after that, a yep. uh, couple years passed, but the, the idea of sailing has already has always been really strong in people's minds. And even if you watch the recent stream by the uh, uh, the old school team, I think they mentioned possibly the one of the top contenders at the moment in terms of ideas that players want explored is sailing. It's just it's just been that thing that's always there. Um, yeah. And so originally back in oh my goodness, twenty twenty I want to say no nineteen twenty when when did we when did at I some join point. Bard? <laughs> um, oh, good question. Um, <laughs> Two I want to say years. maybe yeah, late 2020, early 21, maybe somewhere in that ballpark. Yeah. Wait, when did does that sound about right? We completed it last year, 2020. Last year. So yeah, that, that yeah. would sound about right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so when I, at some point after that, Bard went on a, on a bit of a hiatus for a while. Um, and a, about a year later, I picked up um, Exploration. And that was an idea that... I wanted, <laughs> I wanted to explore, uh, because sure. <laughs> it. Um, I wanted to try another go at sailing. That, that's pretty much what I wanted to do. I liked the idea of sailing, and I wanted to try a new spin on it. Just um, because the idea of exploration had kind of popped up, probably sometime after, after sailing had failed the poll, because it it, um, you know, it has some very similar themes. Yeah. Yeah, and so. I wanted to give it a try myself, uh, and so I, I created an exploration skill. You can go check it out now, And um, uh, but that was a couple years ago. Uh, since then, last year, um, 
we did the bard skill uh you uh caveman and i um shout and, out caveman. Uh, yeah caveman only uh and it was some point after that where it really came prominently to my mind um the limitations of doing skill pitches on paper yeah yeah something i've done previously is i've tried to and other people have tried as well many many times you can see it a, a lot on social media right now try to do little yeah, text sure. posts for um what their dream skill would look like and i've tried doing the same with some really basic visuals first for exploration um, but then taking on the Bard project, it kind of opened my eyes to the possibility of doing a bit of 2D and even 3D design. Um, but it was after the Bard skill that I quickly realized that there were still limitations to the format we were using, which is uh, <laughs> your iconic skyscraper post format. Yeah. Um, because, you know, as much as images, you know, speak a thousand words, and, and <laughs> we had a thousand images in Bard. Uh, oh boy, did we. <laughs> Uh, at the same time, it wasn't something tangible, and that frustrated me, um, because in order for players to be sold an on an idea, they have to feel it out. You can't talk about, you know, the the deep mechanics of um, Guitar Hero. You can't put that on text and expect people no. to be happy. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. People need to have the guitar in their hands and start playing the strings, right? Uh, yeah. And so sometime after Bard last year, probably around April or May, I started picking up um, uh, a bit of Java. Uh, the, the goal was initially just to fool around and create some plugins, and, and I did. Um, but eventually it came to my mind, like, could I use this? Could I actually create uh, a skill in RuneLight? Would it actually work? Would, would it be feasible? Um, and uh, yeah, that kind of brought me to December of last year where you know skill chat was pretty much at its peak uh you know if poll was going out then the poll passed and i uh, i yeah i don't know some <laughs> some strange fury struck me some terrible masochistic um uh rage uh, <laughs> built inside me that demanded i create a sailing skill in rune light and uh and so we're here Yes, and so we are here. And uh, <laughs> I must say, just based on what you've already made, it's, as we said once before, it's phenomenal, but it really is. And I think that it's that tangibility to it, the tactility of actually seeing something in action, even if it isn't necessarily going to be, you know, 100% reflective of what might ultimately end up in game, because mm -hmm. I think that's borderline impossible to accomplish. I think what you've managed yeah. to already anyway, regardless, is amazing. I genuinely think a lot of people will be quite blown away by it if people listening to this out there aren't already. Um, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I don't know if you want to uh, jump into any more aspects of the plugin itself, or whether you'd rather talk about the skill in terms of its like design approaches. What do you reckon? Yeah, well, I think, well, just to briefly say, um, at the yeah. time that this video is being recorded and the project is made public, I'll probably just have submitted the plugin to RuneLight for review. Uh, they ah, have yeah, to make sure that it's you know not cheating any systems, which... Um, which would you know be very bad, uh, so it's probably yes. <laughs> a couple weeks, three maybe more because it's a massive plugin away from actually being publicly available. Um, but yeah, I, I, we we were kind of forced to do that because once it's in the review queue, then anyone can see it, and then f therefore it's already public. So well, we best present well we best present when it does go into the queue. Um, but anyway, actually uh, before we fully jumped in, uh, you have a bit of sailing history yourself general tractor you want to talk about that a bit this is true yeah i guess I can do yeah briefly um yeah so i guess way back in as we say it was 2015 that the original sailing poll i think went mm. out and that received some i forget the exact number now i think it was like 68 percent yes folks Which is pretty impressive actually, to be honest that, yeah i was gonna say that is actually <laughs> quite impressive especially considering now the newly reduced poll threshold required the whole 70 percent that was mm -hmm. like it's a very close number now, although I think the, the actual number um, of people who actually voted in that is like dramatically different compared to the number of votes we get today. So that would obviously oh, yeah. skew things quite a bit. Um, but regardless, around that sort of time, there was 
I would say that was a bit of a shifting in the era of old school. There were some slightly bigger and more ambitious projects being taken on board or being offered at least. And uh, yeah, I, I started getting involved in the community a bit more the following year in 2016. And then after doing some bits and pieces with various areas of the game, including Zaya, yeah. Um, yeah, I decided to, I'm not sure the exact series of events that led me there because, man, looking back, that was like seven something years ago now so. long time yeah Ooh, that's scary to think about but yeah that was a while <laughs> back um yeah uh, one thing led to another i guess and for whatever reason i decided you know what i think sailing as a concept is pretty interesting and i wouldn't mind having a little go at that again because i do think it can probably be generally agreed upon that the sailing skill that was polled maybe you know it wasn't without its flaws then again <laughs> i think all of the polled skills have had their flaws artisan yeah, yeah. sailing and wording um, but I thought, you know what, I'll I'll give it a go. I'll use some of the things that I've learned from sharing a few other ideas and suggestions and giving feedback in the months prior. And I think I started forming this, you know, a, a revisit to the old sailing skill. And yeah, that's what we've centered on. Thinking up a few different training methods. I tried to establish, you know, this idea of there probably needs to be like a good sliding scale of training types and methods that scale in intensity, nice and simple mm-hmm. AFK to something more in, in, involved and engaging. Um, and then quite a lot of emphasis on the big thing that I imagine we're probably going to come to multiple times during this talk, which is um, large scale, expansive, randomly generated oh, adventures yes. and the ad- idea of heading out onto the open ocean and finding all sorts of strange, new, weird and wonderful things. Because um, obviously that is a very compelling aspect to a sailing skill for a lot of people, myself mm-hmm. included in the past. Oh, yeah, and so I kind too. of formed a, yeah, formed a bit of a suggestion surrounding a lot of these different things chucked a bunch of reward ideas all together in a whole host of different islands which again is another topic we can get to in a little while <laughs> um and yeah kind of put that out there to the world and yeah at the time it seemed to be i mean moderately well received i think there was certainly a large chunk of people who basically have just always liked sailing conceptually oh, yeah. and so i think that group was well pretty easy to to sell it to i guess um but yeah i think in in hindsight looking back and especially where we're at now with this sort of iteration of sailing as led by you know um there's a lot of things to have learned from that and things we can kind of change maybe that's one good area to just immediately jump in on if we want to talk about or like segue into talking about the core design of a sailing skill if this seems like a good time to do that oh why not yeah yeah so i think one of those big parts looking back on that version of sailing and Again, I don't want to throw anyone else under the bus, but obviously sailing has probably been the most repeatedly suggested skill by the largest number of players out there. Mm. And there have been quite a few genuinely very, very good, high-quality suggestions, even just in recent weeks and months oh, yeah. uh, surrounding sailing. Um, but a lot of them do share a very similar kind of thread and strand of DNA throughout all of them, which is a lot of the time it does hark back to that, hey, here are some cool new islands to go and visit. Hey, here are some you know awesome randomly generated content for you to jump into and it's very you know dare I use the word mini gamey <laughs> which is the old uh ooh, that's a big one yeah that's a topic but uh, <laughs> that is a big topic um and i think it's been looking at those things very carefully reflectively and introspectively in many ways um to try and hone in on okay what what makes this skill a skill and why would sailing either be a good skill or a bad skill and I think that's kind of led us to this point where seeing you know, my own original incarnation, which I would say is a probably a pretty bad version of a sailing skill at this point in time, that old 2016 version I shared, um, versus what might be a better one. I think a lot of it stems from this idea of looking at what a unique sailing interaction should consist of and how that skill should kind of be utilized. So a lot of these ideas surrounding sailing they tend to use sailing essentially as a means to an end Mm -hmm. as a way of you know you have a quite a literal vessel that you then use to just transport yourself to get to the next piece of content and so a lot of these things end up being oh here's a brand new island with some cool new things on it that you can go and do some new creatures to catch monsters to slay whatever you want and you just kind of sail to it but it's like okay if you take a few steps back from that what what you actually left with is a skill like the actual act mm-hmm. of sailing if we're calling a skill sailing in particular like specifically calling it sailing then shouldn't the act of sailing be kind of the the heart of it, it should be the soul and the core right 
-hmm. if a lot of what sailing is doing the point of it and the purpose of it is to just get to destination and then the content and the real action happens once you're at the destination but the destination requires you to get off your ship and thus you're no longer sailing then that kind of calls into question whether or not it's even a sailing skill anymore I mean, a, a terrible yeah. analogy I've made to some people in the past. And actually, it was quite interesting because I'm pretty sure this term came up in the old school team's recent survey, which is, well, I'll, I'll give a little <laughs> fancy analogy to start with. Like, imagine there is a skill, a hypothetical mm -hmm. skill in which you can travel across the oceans and arrive at brand new destinations and explore new pieces of content on them and gain new resources and new rewards and all sorts there. It's like, Okay, you just described a sailing skill, right? It's like, well, not necessarily. Maybe I just described a piloting skill right. or a flying skill, right. right? Or gliding skill. I think there was one variant of that that was actually name-dropped oh, yeah. in that recent survey, which was <laughs> that's right. very much, a, I don't know, caught me a little bit by surprise anyway. I was like, oh, that's a strange one seeing there. But it's actually a useful point to sort of serve as a, a basis of comparison there because that skill that I just described sounded exactly like a sailing skill that most people have described in the past, myself included. Mm -hmm. Except if you could just as easily swap out a boat for a gnome glider or a hot air balloon, then is it actually a sailing skill? Or have you just made an arbitrary transportation get from point A to point B skill? Mm -hmm. I think that's that's the underlying problem of a lot of this. And the, the key issue I think perhaps we try to hone in on here um, to really get to the bottom of and decide, okay, if it's going to be sailing, then the important features are the ship, the act of sailing, the... The, you know the moment to moment gameplay moving across the ocean using the ocean itself as like a gameplay backdrop as a new setting the location right the destination of an island isn't the location of the sailing skill it's the ocean on which you are sailing and yeah, i think that's sure. like the core design distinction here that we've tried to sort of steer towards and hone in on i think so yeah i don't know if you have any more comments that you'd want to add to that one yeah i think it's I mean, you've explained the the whole situation very well. Um, but I think it's one of those, just to kind of add on to it, yeah. if sailing, if a sailing level is, if the entire purpose of a sailing skill is to gate something by a sailing level, not the not sailing itself, then why is the skill there? I think that's an important yeah. fundamental question because a lot, of, uh, a lot of ideas for sailing are currently, as you've described, um, you know, right-click travel, uh, and you appear at an island or whatever, or you appear on a boat um, in, uh, in in some sort of instance. Um, and so if the, the entire point of a sailing skill is just to gate content, then I don't think, I don't think that's an entirely good skill. Um, it's Definitely, important yeah. to be asking, why, why are we doing this to begin with? And that's, uh, as you've mentioned, one of the reasons why I started the skill proposal as I did. Um, with the basic mechanics, with trying to visualize what um, you know, what the act of s sailing would actually look like, uh, what things are closely tied to sailing versus what things are a little more downstream, uh, and that's why when we get to well, when we get to the section concerning new islands and expeditions or these randomly generated island chains, our formal details are going to be pretty thin on those. Um, yeah, we want to make it very clear that you know. I don't think you could have a sailing without new islands. Oh, That's sure, impossible yeah. to me. <laughs> Definitely. But I, but I do think um, I don't want a sailing that is new islands. I want a sailing that's sailing that you can go to new islands if, if you get the difference. Um, yeah. And, and the other problem, and this is something I've completely fed as well, is that people get really attached to this idea of um, random generation or random instances or um, procedural or whatever. And this is something, again, I fed into as well in my exploration uh, skill pitch. I had the, well, essentially the exact same activity. I call them expeditions. Um, once you've gotten to a certain exploration level, you can go on these randomly generated island uh, uh, island adventures. Um, and that was the idea that probably attracted the most attention about the skill. And that, that disappointed me. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I, I was, you know positive attention is positive attention but at the same time i had the rest of the skill which you know you can you can argue about the fundamentals as much as you want whether whether it's actually good or bad or whatever um but i had the rest of the skill that i wanted to form this basis of exploration i wanted to say exploration is this but with exploration you can do this 
Uh, so with exploration, you can go on these expeditions. But people really, really focused on the random generation side as, as something they wanted, um, to the detriment, in my opinion, of the rest of the skill, uh, such that the way that a lot of people visualized exploration wasn't well, fell into the exact same traps as the sailing we've been describing so far. It's, it was just a means to get to an end, not uh, not an entity, not a skill in itself. And yeah. the other the other trap behind that is that um, uh, is well wishing. <laughs> I've done it a lot. Players do it a lot. Everyone is going to ask a question um, when, it, especially when it comes to a new skill that can be a, a very large project. Um, can it be everything? Can it do everything I want it to do? Um, and that's become almost a bit of a problem because unless you have this insanely developmentally expensive idea, it's really hard to gain traction in the community. If you yeah. are, if you're pitching like a really, um, uh, a, a really intelligent, well-made skill that doesn't have something like really um, uh, explosive to it, that doesn't have this major, you know, seven-year project behind it, uh, then you're not going to get much attention. People really connect with concepts that are really expansive uh, without understanding the costs of execution. And um, yeah, that, that's been a bit of a problem with the sailing idea for a while, uh, is that people have such high expectations for what it's going to be that I'm really afraid, no matter what, uh, it might not succeed. If, if we were to go the route of sailing or any skill for that matter. Yeah. No, I think, uh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, I was going to say to go on the first of maybe many tangents. So sorry <laughs> if I'm interrupting you trying to go for it. Um, <laughs> but no, no, you're absolutely right there. And that's, I think, harking back to what we mentioned where both of us worked on <coughs> a bad skill. And I think that was one of the first times I noticed, like I'm still, you know, hands in the air fully disclose i still kind of adore the idea of a bad skill I think there's of something course. so charming about it and very grounded and medieval and something that i genuinely think would fit beautifully into old school mm-hmm. um but i think one big thing that i did see as a result of that was um there's there's something about the core kind of almost like a visceral gut reaction response to something big like a new skill in old school and the way a certain percentage of the community respond to that, that I think, unfortunately, something like a bad skill, it doesn't have that immediate oomph that Mm -hmm. some other skills might have. But again, this is going to kind of immediately bend off a little bit away from just talking about sailing and this whole conversation of new skills in general, Mm -hmm. which is what is that direction going to look like and how do you get that one skill which does capture enough people's kind of attention, imagination straight off the bat um, without having enough baggage and <laughs> hang-ups that might pull it down. I think that is, I mean, the the weeks and months and maybe years to come, who knows how long this process is going to take, but it's probably going to be quite a turbulent one. For sure. Um, I'm not sure, you know, certainly how it's going to pan out in terms of how quickly or readily agreeable the wider community will be when it comes to, like, forming a consensus on single skill ideas. Yeah, and how some people will always be quite firmly set in their ways when it comes to one skill idea or another and yeah even with something like sailing I will say I guess at this point in time sailing again based on mostly just anecdotal evidence but that anecdotal evidence being sailing is the one skill idea out of basically any other that just keeps coming back Mm -hmm. it just it keeps you know gnawing away at the back of a lot of people's minds it seems and it's by far and away the thing we've seen the most iterations on by the most people. So I think from a very practical sense, and maybe this is an unfortunate reality of how old school is going to have to somewhat design and develop new skills, which is essentially trying to pick the thing that is going to appeal to the masses, even if that means... Now, I'm not saying I think sailing wouldn't make an excellent skill because like, clearly I genuinely think it would. <laughs> um but again, it's like there's a subtle distinction between we may end up having to focus in on areas that are just underlying popular skill concepts, even if that doesn't necessarily mean it's the absolute best designed ever skill for the game or the, the, you know, the best piece of content the game could have or however you want to you know, uh, construe that one. Um, yeah, for so, sure. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, what are most people going to do when it comes to them polling new skills? They'll probably look at the front cover, maybe read the title, yep. maybe <laughs> maybe look at one picture, and and that's that's their decision. And I don't want to, <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna blame you for not spending hours, uh, you know, looking over different designs for uh, old school RuneScape. Uh, it's rather silly to be doing it to begin with. Uh, very silly that I do. Um, but at the same time, that is what most people are going to do. That That's going to be the deciding factor of most people's vote. And I won't yeah. deny that's partially why I wanted to pick up Sailing, was because so many people were already behind the general idea. It was like, well, can I take it and steer it in a more realistic direction? Uh, can I take this idea that already has... Um, you know, this this large community behind it uh, and create it into something realistic and, and not just random generation the game uh, that that is probably way too developmentally expensive to exist. Um, so th that was my that was one thing that drove me to do a sailing. And, and I had to say, I feel so sorry for um, Husky and Elena. Uh, they are <laughs> they are oh, such God, yeah. good mods. Um, they are they are some of the best we've seen, to be honest. And uh, jumping into a new skill conversation is exhausting. I and saying that For you sure. know yes. this process is going to be uh, a year long at minimum before we have a beta. That um, I would burn out very quickly. I burned out from from doing sailing the past seven weeks or so. Yeah. I'm done with this skill. <laughs> well, the bard skill, I think, took it out of all of us collectively, like yourself, myself, and caveman only. So yeah. Oh yeah. I, I well, to be fair. Every single project I do of this caliber uh, takes me out for a while, but Bard was an especially big one, and just how how much work I've put into sailing this past while, yeah, I'm I'm feeling that burnout pretty hard. Um, yeah, but yeah, that, that's the way it is. There there has to be a cost to some doing stuff like this, I suppose. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, on that, um, yeah, on on the topic of sailing again, just more broadly, thinking of it, okay, as like a skill that's in a very strong position um, in terms of popularity and support. I think there's a couple of other things to sort of, you know, we can delve into here. It's still at a slightly more abstract level in a way. It's like, and again, I didn't mention it before when you brought up your exploration skill idea, but I still equally love that. I think that mm -hmm. was a wonderfully done concept there for a skill. And quite frankly, like I'm still of the opinion in terms of skill ideas in general, that things like an exploration skill could even still exist alongside a sailing skill or... Yeah, you know, other possibly. popular community favorites with like a you know controversial dungeoneering skills or <laughs> other kinds of things i mean there's there's an entire kind of category of skills that i would almost label as simply adventuring skills and i think a lot of those that hark into that player's mindset of just wanting to be able to go on some form of adventure and then having it wrapped up in a nice progression centric skill with a leveling system just kind of makes logical sense because that's what yeah. this game is all about at its core right just see number go bigger <laughs> and get dopamine as a result um, but yeah, like I, th I think one thing about sailing that, to me, perhaps pushes it out a little bit more again compared to others. Firstly, let's, I already mentioned Dungeering once, so I'll pull that up again. I do think it would be nice for old school to be able to do, you know, its first new skill in such a way that it's actually unique. Something that is uniquely old school, specifically, mm -hmm. right? Not just a complete derivative of a previous skill, right? Like you've got a lot of skills in rs3 or pre-eoc from summoning to dungeoneering to other popular ones like invention and archaeology are discussed quite a lot and i think there's you know there's absolutely like merits to each of them and good points and bad points of all and lots to learn from but i think on some level it would be really nice to be able to take a project as big as a new skill as a real opportunity to let old school just kind of be its own thing and try and move out of the shadow of rs3 and perpetually mm -hmm. recreating content from the past I don't want to get too negative at any point here, but I do think we've had maybe the last couple of years seeing a few pieces of fairly significant pieces of content come to the game um, from that pre EOC era again. Things jumped to mind for me would be you know Soul Wars or Nex, mm -hmm. and again I, I, I don't want to speak on behalf of the community, but just gauging general sentiment, it kind of feels like they perhaps didn't blow people as a, away as much as they were perhaps thinking it yeah. would do in their minds, right? A lot of community Absolutely. members were very hyped about the idea of Soul Wars coming back. And then it did, and it was like, oh, yeah, that's that's Soul Wars with, you know, a few little minor tweaks here and there. And, 
yeah, that's same the problems guess. it had before, but we're yep. adults now. <laughs> the same. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly that. It's like once that, you know, the rose tinted lenses are put down and the nostalgia starts to wear off again, you kind of get a repeat of basically exactly what happened with old school. I mean, the first time around when it launched in 2013, right? Mm-hmm. Like a huge amount of popularity, big fun nostalgia binge for those first few months. And then by the end of the year, yeah, guess what? Like a lot of plays have kind of drifted away. They've had their nostalgia fix and mm-hmm. yeah, that's that's about it. <laughs> and I do feel like you're somewhat shackling yourself to a certain limit when you bring back something old, like again, Soul Wars or Next. You almost create like an upper threshold that you can't easily exceed because there's a certain degree of expectation as to what those pieces of content should be doing or what they shouldn't be doing. And if you try and tread too far over the line, then, well, it's just, it's not Soul Wars anymore. It's not Nex anymore. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I think it would be nice on the topic of new skills to really just pick something that technically hasn't been done before <laughs> rather than potentially shackling ourselves to, let's do a version of summoning again. Let's do a version of Dungeoneering yeah. again, or let's do a old school spin on invention. Yeah, I mean, again, I think... all of those could absolutely work, but it would be nice at least at like an entry point, right? If this is the first ever brand new skill in old school and who knows what the long term future holds. But I think this is the best opportunity we've ever had to really kind of make a mark for old school being its own unique old school thing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, nostalgia is one of those things. It's a uh, it's a very strict master. Um, every time the old school team teases a little bit of nostalgia bait, they're as you said, they're suddenly chained to that idea. You deviate it too far. People are going to ask, where is my old thing? Uh, you know, the same thing happened with pretty much every single one of the next drops. But when you yeah. look at the, um, the content that people think of when they think of old school, they think of raids. They think of the Inferno. You know, updates uh, like Fossil Island or Prif or the Kevos Lowlands you know, are unique quests. Those are the things that people think of when they think of old school. They're not thinking of content like soul wars or next and as you've said uh, that's because some of old school's best content is the content that's been designed for old school not designed for you know 2011 rs2 and uh yeah wow this is a tangent uh but anyways (laughs) (laughs) the point being is you know i very much agree i would i would love if we made this new skill our own uh you know actually learned from the mistakes of the past and didn't pull a divination 2.0 as 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 some people seem to be leaning a lot more to uh, such a simple skill again um that sort of thing maybe you know taking taking summoning a new direction with maybe something like ranching uh trying to learn the mistakes of the past because summoning had a lot of problems um but again if you say summoning, people have a very specific idea of what that looks like, and they need to have it that way. And once that nostalgia wells run dry after a couple of months, uh, and people realize it's no good anymore, they latch on to the next nostalgia well and uh, yep. <laughs> and run that for its course. Um, anyway, all this is to say, yes, I mean, you've been involved in several new skill projects, I have as well, and they've all been about new skills because fundamentally that's that's very much what what you and I want and and many other players yeah. is something that's legitimately new and and built for old school uh not built for for the child that played in in 2010 yeah absolutely and just sort of like continuing on that but segueing a little bit um like sailing again specifically like bringing back your skill pitch of exploration <laughs> and the potential for it and how it could you know incorporate sailing into it which absolutely it could do Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's another thing that okay, I don't know how far down this rabbit hole to delve now, <laughs> but um, the idea of like what scope and scale a skill should be having and like how big or expansive versus how kind of small and, and contained in ideas. Mm-hmm. And I think for me, at least, again, sailing hits potentially quite a nice sort of sweet spot there. I think, you know, if I had to be brutally honest and say a concern with exploration is because even just from like this, the skill name itself it is it has quite a broadness to it and it could be you know interpreted in a number of different ways and all those different ways would be completely legitimate Mm -hmm. um but then that does potentially create a bit of an incoherent skill idea or design or underlying kind of foundation to it um where it you know i think it would be a shame if we ended up with a skill that ends up being so big and broad and so vague that it kind of becomes a bit of a a catch-all and like almost like a dumping ground for like anything new 
because well, that's the too. new skill. And, <laughs> exactly, yeah. And I mean, a lot of players bring that up as a point, and you know, it's a strong criticism against warding. Where it's like, why isn't this yeah. content just going into crafting or room crafting or spread between the two? And it's all like very valid points, and I think it does open up the question of well, how broad or how narrow should a skill be? I mean, you know what? Roll back the clocks. I don't know how many people even know this. It's I don't know, come and go from my mind over the years. It's like, oh yeah, that was actually a thing for an extremely <laughs> brief window in RuneScape Classic, but we once had a tailoring skill. Mm-hmm. Very, very, very short-lived one, and it coexisted alongside crafting. And all tailoring did was just, I think it was like a couple of pieces of leather items, like making some literal level one gear that did borderline <laughs> nothing. So clearly the Gower brothers at the time were like, do we try and flesh out this into an entire you know, cloth-making skill? And then, you know what, let's just bung it into crafting for now. And yeah. When you think about it, in the grand scheme of things, what a tiny little thought process like that has had such colossal knock-on effects <laughs> to um, in the in the future, where we are now today, some 20-plus years later. But it does yeah. kind of open up an interesting avenue of like, okay, how big should a skill be? How broad should it be? Because in many ways, I think you could argue, you know what? Maybe the game as a whole would be better if crafting kind of didn't exist, or maybe if we had a, a tailoring skill and a jewelry-making skill and a mm-hmm. you know, something else, so things could have their own more concrete identity versus i mean what's the other logical conclusion you could kind of extrapolate towards in a very exaggerated way well the game could just have gathering skill where you just (laughs) acquire all resources and then you have crafting or production where you just make everything (laughs) exactly yeah and you end up with like three skills and then just miscellaneous skill for all support and (laughs) random things and i don't know that to me feels like a very uninteresting landscape right i think part of the nice you know the nicety of of old school and, and runescape at its core are all these little different vibrant and unique skilling methods and how they interact with each other and to that end i think having more kind of unique and slightly more specialized skills that focus on one area and doing that one area particularly well feels a bit nicer to me and also obviously opens up the scope for just more things in the future so that's why i think sailing in particular has like a nice kind of core underlying foundation to it. it has a very clear distinction to everything else that's currently in game i mean you know it opens up the ocean for starters there's no other skill we have that really offers up that as a content opportunity in a really logical and intuitive way without feeling a little bit shoehorned in so that's why i think some of like that offers you know a nice degree of scope and new content potential but without going too far that like a very very broad all-encompassing no, again, not to. I don't want to sound like I'm ragging on an exploration skill because I genuinely think that has to be like a very, very good skill. But that's one of the the challenges you'd, you'd have to continuously wrangle. I think with um, exploration is just like where you kind of draw the boundary at, mm-hmm. and sort of yeah, what you want to contain within and what you don't. Whereas sailing has a nice, pretty clear boundary, which is the land, right, <laughs> the coast. <Yeah. laughs> that's like yeah. a really clear one. Um, so that's I think that kind of adds to its favour a little bit. Um, yeah, I don't know if you have any more thoughts on that particular topic there in terms of like skill scope or yeah, the broadness or narrowness of anything like that. Yeah, I don't want to talk too much about exploration, I suppose, but yeah, <laughs> no. it absolutely did did have problems of its own, and, and many people were very quick to point that out. Even from the very concept of exploration, it's like, you know, you do so much exploring in RuneScape already through, you know, different quests. Is there a need to put a name and a number on it? Yeah, uh, or is that just sort of degrading the natural exploration that that you're already doing? Um, you know, that's a fantastic conversation. If, if I were to go back, I'd probably try and twist it into something else, like um, maybe some sort of uh, scribing or scholar skill that you know you have to explore to learn new scientific magical discoveries. So yeah. you're still getting that sort of feeling of you know moving around and exploring the game world, uh, but it's you know a completely different context. Um, and so yeah, I you know I'm not uh, I'm not wholly attached to any specific skill idea. Um, I'm certainly not going to be crying if sailing isn't the skill that uh, you know makes it through yeah, the pulls. Sure. Um, I, I guess so long as the skill that does, if a skill ever does, it is good enough. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. And as you've as you've mentioned, it's really hard to catch that balance. I've heard people say that a sailing skill is too narrow. And that was one of the most, uh, m- I, not mind-blowing, I feel like that implies something positive. That was one of the most mind-breaking uh, yeah. <laughs> comments that I had heard in quite some time. I was like, well, well, I guess I suppose I was working on a sailing skill, so I'd explored some of these, some of these depths, so to speak. Um, but think about everything you do on the ocean, and, and not from the shores, on the ocean. 
you cannot constitute a, <laughs> a large enough uh, skill out of that. It just seems rather silly to me. Um, and same thing with, um, you know, as you've mentioned, crafting is is actually a very bloated skill. That is a skill that is too broad, in my opinion. I yeah, agree. I'm not fundamentally against breaking apart old skills or like taking a small piece of an old skill and, and fleshing it out into something completely new. Uh, if you flesh it out well enough, um, like a, a user on Reddit, uh, Regenerator, I think it was, I had a little brewing skill going on. I think it could have been oh, yeah. uh, broader, bigger, um, but I'm absolutely not against uh you know completely parsing that from cooking in real life they are very very different skills uh, <laughs> there's pretty much nothing <laughs> there's very little comparable between them but yeah. if you can if you can take that little piece and flesh it out sufficiently i'm i'm good with that if you can take enchantment out of magic and create this really cool deep new skill out of it then then i'm all for that um at the same time i don't think that's something that we could really pull off for our first skill because people are expecting something maybe a little more exciting, something that you know you can't currently do in game, um, and in the same vein, uh, like I can't imagine us pulling off a gathering or production skill for a first skill. I yeah. don't really see that happening, <laughs> partially because you know the two are often you know paired together. Unless you create I don't know a gathering skill that feeds into say construction or production skill that um i don't know takes the fish that you catch in in, in new different dimensions um those are the types of skills i don't really see getting through because as we've already talked about it doesn't really inspire that much it doesn't give you a really strong sense that you're introducing something new and exciting into the game um regardless of whether it's new or exciting uh something that we've talked about at length is the difference between concept and execution um, yes. I've said it before, you can have the most amazing concept, you can have the greatest final boss battle of, of, um, of any game ever, where you know, you're trying to defeat this universe destroying boss, uh, and the visuals are you know, amazing, there's explosions going off in the distance, and you're in the middle of a, a war between you know, a million different spaceships. Um, but if the execution ends in a, a quick time event where you tap A, X, Y, in the right sequence and, and the <laughs> boss is defeated that's well that that sucks <laughs> uh, yeah. that's <laughs> that's taking the best concept you could have had and executing it terribly but at the same time you can have a game and i've used this specific example before uh with a really mundane concept like stardew valley which the essentially the grounds of it is that you take over your grandfather's farm there you go get, go to work start planting your plants and, and watering your crops and it is a pretty much universal, universally beloved game uh, just because the execution of it is so good. The progression paths are so satisfying. The animations and sounds and, and the routine and, and the fact that you, it, it doesn't have to be like this, this calm game. You can essentially try and speed run it to, and you can also go different routes where you try to get the most points in the however many years you're given. I, I can't remember. Um, so yeah, concept and execution, very, very different things. But when you're polling, you do not have that execution generally. And well, let's loop this right back to, to the sailing skill here. Um, this is where I wanted to try and get that execution. I wanted to be able to, again, try and get people to actually feel a material skill. Um, and it might not be a great execution. I, I guess I'm, we're just gonna have to wait for player feedback on that one. Um, though Those sail controls are, um, you know, they might be controversial. I don't know. There was a million different iterations of how the sail, um, or of how the boat controls could have worked. Um, and of course, we can't do all of them. We have to end up with one. Yeah. No, for sure. Yeah. And, and just in, you know, seeing various other players' sailing skill pitches over the years, and, you know, especially increasing just recently, I've seen numerous iterations on exactly that on like how do you control a ship what should it look like how should that be executed whether it's you know point and click movement whether there's some sort of map based movement systems or whether it's again kind of like directional and and keyboard shortcuts and things that you've gone for in the plugin here um i think it's all you know it's it's difficult to say i think even now right like we we probably couldn't say for certain yep this is absolutely 100 percent the way it should be done yeah. and here is the proof right if anything it's like I think this should be a proof of concept that, you know, one of many other things 
could be done and i think it absolutely could work if this is you know the desired direction for people if this feels good enough you know having played around with your plugging myself a bit i'm maybe i'm biased <laughs> and everything <laughs> but i've definitely like enjoyed it and there are some really really fun elements about uh you know within it already um, even just in its you know fairly rudimentary form that it's currently taken I, I think you can already see the potential um but yeah it's i think trying to navigate that balance as well between opening up the concept to people and showcasing how it can be executed but still keeping them kind of just detached enough so people can you know be able to latch onto a concept still and, and not feel dismissive to it if it isn't immediately perfect or to their liking that's another mm-hmm. very big challenge and even now you know with sailing with anything else that's going to i think continue being a challenge um i mean like the ultimate incarnation of that i think was probably the pre-eoc skill of dungeoneering i think in my opinion there's nothing inherently wrong with the concept of exploring dungeons right like finding yeah. something unique about dungeon crawling and those kinds of randomly generated dungeon experiences with an adventuring party but just the way that was executed was just so far off base for the majority of players looking for a more traditional grounded skilling experience mm. what one would typically expect of a skill and again that kind of taps into this sailing pitch as well trying to figure out where that sweet spot is of kind of simplicity and maybe that's a, a good segue point to start talking about maybe just some of the the bare bones mechanics of ship based movement and how we kind of like see that sort of fitting in with the wider landscape of you know simple intuitive controls and yeah everything there i don't know if you have anything you want to jump on there to start with yeah well i suppose let's let's talk about some of those controls yeah um so yeah as i've as i mentioned this has gone through a couple iterations uh, even this this most uh this most recent iteration has only been around for probably two or so weeks um there's so many different ways you can take it and there's only so much time that you have to to play with these controls because each time uh, you make new controls you have to program how they work you have to give them some new uh, you know new lick of paint that reflects their function Um, and so this latest one is essentially you're controlling your sort of like your sail length or sail speed is really what it is I suppose as well as the angle of your boat Um, and this is different um, from the last iteration uh, probably the biggest ways because previously you used to manually change the angle of your sail instead of changing the length of it and so what this what this meant was that you had to think of where the wind was and then you would want to point the sail in that direction or if you want to go slower point the sail away from that direction um, this was an iteration that was around for quite some time and uh, it itself went through a couple different sub iterations um, and uh, we ended up settling on the current one because I think at, at, at a certain point General Tractor you had said to me that you know it was it was cool it was really neat to play with however you were trying some of the the obstacle courses the uh, the trials yeah um, and you had found that <laughs> you you said it was more fun to simply ignore the sail completely and just <laughs> focus on angling your boat in the right direction. And that kind of that kind of hit me a bit like a rock. Is like, oh, no. Oh, no, that's true. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I wish that I had more time to experiment with different control schemes. You know, two weeks is not much time to let controls settle, especially because you know, these past two weeks have been filled with putting, you know, editing the video and, you know, making visuals and, and not so much, you know, playing with the control scheme that I had made. Um, and, and similarly, there's the fundamental question, uh, should sailing just be point and click? That's something I've, um, I've battled with back and forth, well, for the past seven weeks, I suppose. Like, is it better just to go back, revert to a system that people are already familiar and comfortable with, rather than the current system that I have. Yeah. Um, and, you know, one of the biggest differences between the two is that there is a certain, uh, you have a tighter level of control with point and click than you do the current sail controls. And and this you can see is, as good or bad, depending on what context uh, you're coming from. I don't know, General Tractor, have you ever played League of Legends at all? I haven't played in years, mind you. But have you ever played it? You know what? I actually haven't. The entire okay. MOBA subgenre has been one that's just passed me by. And then somehow, 
I think the first time I started seeing League of Legends, so this is a real tangent now. <laughs> Go for it. I've I've never heard anything positive about it. So <laughs> I've only ever heard people raging and saying how much they hate it. And I'm like, why do you keep playing then? And why would I want to start playing that? So I've just avoided it. But then again, maybe that's a all too common thought I've heard in the RuneScape community as well about people raging at this wonderful game we all love. But anyway, short answer, no. But I'm I'm very familiar with okay. it, like conceptually that's how okay. it works and plays. But just it's not my cup of tea. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I mean, you've you've struck a victory there. I <laughs> I would have been better off not playing it at all. I think not that I was super into it, but I, I played it plenty and. Um, I generally wasn't a, a positive experience, but it's an experience that keep kept pushing you back to it. But anyways, uh, the basic controls is you point in a direction, you right click, yes, you right click to move, and your character yeah. instantly turns towards where you clicked and starts moving in that direction. Um, okay, yeah. That's your basic control uh, for moving around. And part of what makes MOBAs uh, feel extremely snappy and responsive is because your character will instantly react uh, to your click. As soon as you press a button, something happens that, that uh, and it's very, very precisely, something very precisely happens. You click somewhere, your character starts going there immediately. Yeah. Um, now RuneScape does, RuneScape tries to do something similar, but it's on, it's on a, a very lengthy tick timer of 0.6 seconds, which is, yep. uh, which is quite a bit. Uh, because when you click, uh, um, when you click on a tile, your character will immediately try and uh, reorient itself towards that tile and, and move there or path around whatever it needs to path. Um, now, sailing, this iteration of sailing doesn't do that. It's not point and click. You have controls, um, and this gives it a certain sense of weight and momentum. Obviously, this was very intentional, uh, but you can't instantly 180 degrees. You have to click the wheel button or click your keyboard, I suppose, until you turn around there. And in the meantime, if you're moving, you're going to be moving in a bit of an arc. Now, this obviously acts a lot more like a, a sailboat would in real life. And if you ever played games like, like Sea of Thieves, you would know very much that you feel the weight of the boat when you try and move it. It yeah. is not instantly reactive. It, it takes time to do its own thing. And again, depending on what context you're coming from and what you're expecting, and I guess how well the controls are, um, you know, attuned to the gameplay. Um, this can either feel great or not so great to you. I re I feel it's pretty good, but others might not agree with me. And that's one of the big deciding factors between whether, you know, a point and click system or, um, you know, a, a control scheme like the one I've devised. Uh, that, that's that's pretty much the biggest dividing factor. Are we good with that sort of sense of weight and momentum, or do we want a snappier system uh, to go along with a sailing skill? Yeah, I want I think, to s go for it. So, oh, I, I was just going to jump in there and say, because this, I think it directly taps into another kind of sub-question that very closely sits alongside this, which is what other kind of core fundamentals should a new skill be doing, or what opportunities does a new skill provide us or how should a new skill be kind of incorporated into the game in such a way that it justifies its own existence separate from existing skills right so mm -hmm. to that end and then the conversation of you know movement and controls and the core basics of what sailing hypothetically could be i think that really ties in heavily there which is okay well is one part of having a new skill also considering like a brand new game mechanic and to that end, I would say, like, this form of sailing that has been presented here by Gnome and the plugin and the prototype here, I think that absolutely does that. I think this is a legitimate, like, new core underlying mechanic. This is a new style of gameplay that doesn't mm -hmm. currently exist anywhere in old school. And that's, you know, I mean, it, it comes with both good and bad, technically, right? Like, I think the good is that it really does, again, heavily justify its own existence because this is not being done anywhere else. This is a new thing, and... Maybe it warrants coming along with a big new update like a new skill, but the downside and the bad is that you're going to get a lot of people who are very staunchly traditionalist, for lack of a better term, right? Oh, yeah. like they, they want things to look and feel and play and just be ultra, ultra familiar, right? They, they don't want anything to deviate at all. Mm -hmm. And that's where we're always going to hit into a... I mean, it's just going to be a, a difficult conversation to have to navigate and different portions of the community to have to wrangle there. 
And I don't think you really can do it any other way than just like having these kinds of conversations that we are right now and opening them up to the wider community and just straight up seeing what the response is. Because there isn't really any other way of truly knowing, I don't think, and, and seeing how many people are on board with that. Like establishing yep. that new skill tenant, should a new skill be intentionally trying to bring at least like a new dimension to the game or should it not be, right? Should it be <laughs> just trying to completely slot itself into the game kind of like seamlessly we've seen that in you know the previous skill pitches alongside sailing with like artisan and warding you kind of see a bit of a sliding scale there of interactions and you know unique elements or not you got all the way to sort of your your artisan type skills and i still see that you know get brought up in a few different incarnations for you know a, a task skill essentially um mm -hmm. which you know at the very i would say that is pretty much the, the most polar opposite end of this one which is the <laughs> do you want a skill with literally no mechanics right like literally nothing yeah. in it is new it's just go and do the old content again but this time you don't get a choice <laughs> <laughs> um oh dear, maybe my biases are coming out here now i'm a bit anti-artisan but sorry everyone who's an artisan fan i do think there are interesting <laughs> sorry again another tangent time um i think there are some interesting subcategories that artisan taps into which is the underlying idea of the non-combat side of the game being quite heavily sidelined compared to combat as the oh, years yeah. have gone on and this idea of having lots and lots of different skilling methods that have just fallen by the wayside even if you know some even at the launch of old school were already kind of dead on arrival and many others have kind of gradually drifted away as the game has gone in other certain directions and really funneled people into certain especially kind of mini game style activities have become mm -hmm. quite popular for skills and taken away from core so there's definitely a whole conversation there surrounding like how you interact with old content but yeah, whether a new skill should be doing something that is completely devoid of mechanics and just propping up old game content, like that's one, you know, very extreme end of the spectrum there, versus I guess this incarnation of sailing would be much more heavily on the opposite side of that opposite side of that spectrum, mm -hmm. whereby you are bringing together, you know, it's a it's a new mechanic, it's a new set of gameplay opportunities and thus a whole new slew of content potentially. Um and yeah, we'll start discussing more of what those content opportunities could be uh, in conjunction to sailing but i think that is a lot of what this con control scheme kind of taps into the conversation of of whether we want you know a, a core new mechanic with a skill or not and just to quickly round out this thought as well before i check it back to you Noam. um yeah like on the control scheme itself like it's it's one where i fully agree it, it feels it, there is a certain you know weight to it in game and a, it, it has an impact to it that genuinely you know it, it gives you that impression of I don't want to use the term, you know, realistic, but it, it <laughs> certainly is, and it's significantly more so than just what a point-and-click sail system would be, where I just feel like, you know, moving on land, but now you're on blue water instead, and it's basically the yeah. same gameplay. But <laughs> there's there's something to that element of, you know, seeing your ship kind of constantly move by itself, you know, once your sails are up, and maybe you're in the wind and it's taking you along, and you're just sort of watching your ship move, and then being able to click to, to navigate. And one thing I will say is, as Noma so geniusly managed to incorporate key bindings which i mean there's a whole another conversation there i guess with oh yeah <laughs> the elements of at the minute in old school key binds and keyboard shortcuts have been traditionally restricted to like your sort of quintessential f keys and you're juggling between tabs and interfaces and that's about where it ends um so i guess there's another sub question amongst all of this which is how do you you know how do people feel to having optional and that is a key word to stress there completely optional mm -hmm. um keyboard shortcuts and the ability to use keyboard controls either in addition to or instead of mouse and clicking on you know interface elements because that's one thing where for me i think i said to you a few times and i'm in sort of testing various iterations of the plugin it just immediately felt like really good just yeah. having my you know handed in a very natural pc gamer position where you're sitting there on wasd <laughs> right with left hand and being able to just very intuitively rotate kind of left right or clockwise counterclockwise and then again with the most recent iteration where it's like speed up with w and speed down with s and maybe dropping anchor to stop immediately with some like shift or what have you um it all felt very intuitive and to me that almost immediately felt seamless to the point where it's like you know what? i don't think i'll even bother with the clicking controls on the ui elements with the mouse <laughs> i'm just gonna i'm just gonna stick with these keyboard shortcuts because it genuinely feels very good and then start laying a few more layers of content into it and we'll get talking the, the depths of what you know sailing combat could look like and suddenly things started feeling really good to me being able to fire off cannons at 
mm. kraken and ships and all sorts so yeah on a personal level i think having that a like the one half of the conversation of should a new skill have new mechanics i'm much more inclined to say yes i think it should i think looking at previous skill pitches i've been a part of again just to call back to a bad skill that's one thing i really liked about that because it had so mm-hmm. much potential for just like a new style of gameplay a new kind of interaction with different gameplay elements that one obviously more rhythmic and musical based but this yeah. one being more kind of looking about movement and mobility i guess in a, in a new avenue in a new area um i think both of those are quite compelling to me and so i think my gut says for the first half of that conversation yes i think it is a nice thing to be able to explore an actual new mechanic with a new skill because it's kind of like is there even ever going to be a better opportunity to do that probably not um no. and then the second part of that being sailing in particular these controls with the sort of left and right movement the keyboard optional shortcuts as opposed to just point and click to go where you want to i think that just feels it it feels very satisfying to me having used it a little bit Mm -hmm. um yeah i think compared to just doing you know the more or less the exact same gameplay that you've been used to before in other pieces of content with just clicking but now it's a ship instead of a character um yeah i'm kind of I'm already sold, I think, on the the current <laughs> chosen scheme. So, um, but yeah, I don't know if you have more anything you'd want to add to that. The idea of yeah, new mechanics in skills or yeah, the keyboard shortcuts or whatnot. Yeah, I, I suppose just to touch on the keyboard shortcuts directly for a bit. Uh, yeah, I definitely agree with you that they're they are the more satisfying control scheme uh, than the point and click at the moment. Um, and I don't doubt that that's partially because. Uh, with Runelight, you can only do so many things, to be honest. For example, it yeah. doesn't let you uh, control your camera very well. There's some nice. really rough camera controls that I put in the config, but they're, they're really not good. Um, so, you know, ideally, of course, just like a camera sort of watches and follows your character, the camera would watch and follow your boat because your, your character essentially turns into the boat when you're on the water. Um, and so what the keyboard shortcuts really helped with there is they meant that you didn't have to think of where your mouse was in relation to uh, the sailing tab. Uh, you could just stare at your boat and, you know, click the appropriate button. You, you know where WASDA is in your space bar without having to look at it. And so your eyes could just stay on your little ship going around. Um, so I don't doubt that, that was, that's part of why the keyboard controls currently feel a lot more satisfying. Uh, the other thing is pressing your space bar to fire cannon is a really satisfying and traditional uh, really method of, <laughs> of destroying enemies. Uh, <laughs> it it kind of never gets old, to be honest. Uh, we'll probably talk about um, naval combat in a little bit. Um, yeah. But that was just one of those things that I think that was probably the one piece once I imp- implemented it. I was like, yes, I think that this sailing is satisfying. Um, it, yeah, it's funny how those little things will do it for you. Um, I think for Bard, uh, it was seeing an instrument in a player's hands. Um, yeah. I think that just that visual really evoked something for me that I was like, this this image that I'm you know that I'm seeing is has a certain level of satisfaction to it that that really attracted me to the idea. And I think it was just hitting that space bar and seeing cannonballs fly that that did it to me for for sailing here. Um, and, and speaking of uh, the other controls, um, again, they've gone through many different iterations, including like how the wind works, for example. Um, one specific thing that was a, a very early iteration uh, is that if you were trying to sail into the wind, you would not move at all, which is very realistic. <laughs> I don't know if you've yeah. ever been sailing General Tractor, uh, but if you're pointing in the wind, you're not going very far. <laughs> yeah, I think that'd be a bit of a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> um, which I suppose brings up another conversation about um, square sails uh, versus triangular. There's a better name for triangular sails, but I'll just call them triangular, uh, that we're just ignoring the distinction for the purpose of simplicity. Um, yeah. uh, but um, that was one of the things uh, that had to be touched on uh, because it was like, well, well, if I'm trying to turn around and I turn in the direction of the wind, I'm now going zero tiles um, a tick. If I turn into the wind, I'm suddenly going like, I don't know, <laughs> four plus tiles per tick. And yeah. it was just this really awkward balance um, that really hadn't been struck there uh, between uh, when trying to move around the world. And that's something that um, it's been ironed out quite a bit uh, for example, I now let you move at one tile per tick if you're moving directly into the wind. No matter what speed you're going, one tile a tick. 
Um, but at the same time, the controls probably aren't perfect. Maybe you should be going faster than four tiles a tick if you're moving with the wind. Maybe you should be going slower. Maybe it should be more forgiving if you're pointing, you know, 45 degrees away from the wind. Um, I'm not so sure. And that's one of the things that someone with more time than me would have to experiment with to get something that ends up really satisfying. I'm pretty happy with how it is now, um, but it's something that would absolutely need extra work. And actually speaking of, um, I probably haven't mentioned to you, General Tractor, the, the movement mechanic. And uh, movement oh, yeah. mechanic? <laughs> yes, you can move. Uh, the momentum <laughs> <Yes>. mechanic. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, this is a mechanic, it's a bit of a hidden mechanic that I put in the plugin, which pretty much the, the, broadly it states that if you turn t uh, away from the wind and you would normally be going uh, one speed slower, instead for one tick you will essentially maintain part of your current speed. So if, oh, um, right. yeah, if you're moving directly with the wind, say four tiles per tick, and you move just to you know a 90 degrees away from the wind, uh, for one tick, you will still be going four ticks per four four, <laughs> four tiles yeah. per tick. That sounds um, right. Yep. <laughs> before you start dropping down to three or two or whatever it is, and again, this what I really tried to sell with this is this sense of momentum that you get when you're using a real sailboat. I've been sailing a couple times in like a really small one-person boat. Um, probably a year or two ago now. Uh, tons of fun, by the way. Highly recommend. Um, and that was something that very, very strongly um, played into how I visualized this sailing. Um, having that sense of weight and momentum was really important um, because previously, before I had implemented this, even if you're going one tick, one tile per tick sailing into the <laughs> wind, um, if, if you if you turned into that from going two tiles per tick, it felt it still felt really bad. Yeah. Uh, and so now the current system is if you, yeah, if you're at 45 degrees to the wind and at full sail length, so full speed, you'll move at two. If you turn into the wind for one tick, you'll still go two tiles before you drop down to one tile. Okay, yeah. And what's really neat about this as well is that it, it allows, <laughs> again, this is, this is influenced by, by me having done the tiniest bit of sailing myself, is, um, oh no, what's the name for it? Tacking and weaving? T tacking and, oh my goodness. Oh God, I don't know. My sailing knowledge oh, is lacking, I'm afraid. Uh, that's okay. So pretty much the idea is that um, in real life, you cannot sail directly into the wind. So if yeah. you're trying to reach a place that is, you know, that the angle to the place is directly in the wind, uh, um, yeah you have to go at a 45 degree angle to it. So what yes. you do is you go 45 degrees to the right, and then you go 45 degrees to the left, and then to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left, until you reach your destination, right? Yeah. Um, and so if you're currently in game, uh, in game, in the plugin, if you are going at full sail speed, at 45 degrees to the wind, you will go at two tiles. If you're going into the wind, it's one tile. So what you can do is you well, you tack and weave. Uh, you keep going at 45 degrees, left to right to left to right, and you'll actually maintain a faster speed than you would be if you were going directly into the wind yourself. Yeah, yeah. So that was, anyway, <laughs> this is a bit of a bit of a tangent on its own, but these are the sorts of things that you, a, dev, a real developer would have to play with. Yeah. Um, you, th these are the sorts of things that you really can't get down on paper and you really need time to explore. Um, but anyway, that's that's my uh, that's my momentum speech. Uh, <laughs> I sure. think that covers the, the general sail controls. Um, so why don't I, I guess? Do you have anything to add there? Uh, no, I think so. I think well, other than the fact that you know, two small things. One, I definitely feel um, like I experienced that before in another game called Valheim. We've spoken about that briefly oh, yes. as well. <laughs> Uh, as some again to me it's another example of like genuinely enjoyable sailing mechanics and it's you know actually quite similar to what you've kind of devised here in in old school for this sailing plugin as well and again it's just it's harking back to times where it seemed like whenever i played valheim the year or so back whenever it was and every time i went sailing it seemed like i was always sailing against the wind it, it was just evil <laughs> like that and so yeah that was one thing that i pretty much spent my entire time playing that game doing is what was it tacking and weaving then just going 
right angle, like angle, 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 left, right, yeah. left, right, left, yep. right, just diagonally into the wind as far as you can. <laughs> so there we go. I get to relive that experience again in uh, old school now, potentially with a sailing plug in. But yeah, that's yeah. great. <laughs> and another thing to just follow up on that one, I think also harking back to a bit earlier in our conversation about being able to sort of like see things and feel them. I think this is another perfect conversation when we're trying to talk about kind of speeds and movement and how you kind of like navigate to left and right and how different mechanics play. It's like, it's so different just like seeing it in game and being able to just intuitively mm. like try it. There's, I think it really does, like, <laughs> it really does hammer home that point to me of how quickly and effectively you can kind of get a feel for something without needing to try and describe it versus it can be really challenging trying to sell someone something on a description of it and trying to explain oh, yeah. how the mechanics function on like a point to point basis because you could very easily do that. But again, when we're talking about like ticks and tiles per tick and speed and then direction and compass you know orientation with wind direction it, it can it can be difficult to like process that in your mind whereas you see it in the games like oh yeah wind's going that way i'm going this way i'm going this speed cool and it's just yeah yeah it, it makes a lot more sense so yeah there's another i think the, the benefits of doing these kinds of like play testing and again as you mentioned with the you know should anything go into a, a full scale production right like the old school team are making their own skill when let's say it ends up being a sailing thing i think this is absolutely the type of thing where it would just have so much ex- or it would necessitate at least some real extensive play testing on both internally by them i think on the old school team to really get a feel for you know what works well and what doesn't like how how fast should a max speed be how slow should a min speed be and mm-hmm. how quickly should things turn and move and all these different things right there's a lot of fine tuning and minutia and balancing there that come into play and again i imagine the players could also be potentially instrumental in that with various forms of alpha or beta tests that I think would you'd want to run in some capacity. And I think in yeah. many ways a sailing skill is like a, a perfect... <clears throat> it's the perfect uh, example of a skill where it would be good to just be able to test the main mechanic, right? Before you even get content, before you get any reward potential, anything like that. Just having like a cool mechanic in people's hands, which hopefully this plugin will, you know, do a little bit of at least for some players to get an early tentative feel of. Yeah, for sure. And and this goes right back to our conversation about, you know, concept versus execution. Um, There's no way we would be having, you know, 90% of this conversation uh, about the sailing mechanics if we didn't have something to to feel it out in game. Yeah. Uh, There's so much that goes on behind the screen that it's, it must be frustrating as a, as a J mod to hear people latch on to very specific criticisms before their idea has been fleshed out. Oh yeah. Um, When, when often when they're talking about concepts they are really these broad overarching ideas um and which have such have almost nothing to do with the actual execution uh hallowed sepulcher well uh, this is an example i use all the time hallowed sepulcher is just a just a great piece of content um yeah but you could have had it both ways where it you know it could have been just a basic agility course or it could have been exactly what we got and these aren't things that you can really describe to players. Uh, and it's really unfortunate because that means that any sort of concept of how uh, players imagine a skill is going to be based off of pretty much pure imagination. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, so something I very quickly realized when putting together the, the plugin was that if I were doing this on paper, a traditional uh, skyscraper post or image post like we've done many times before, yeah. Uh, and the sail controls would look absolutely nothing like what they look right now. Like what they look right now, right now. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, it, um, you saw some of my earlier iterations. You know, when I first sent you a video of you know the potential mechanics of sailing, it yeah. looked very, very different. And I can tell you, it would not have worked well whatsoever. Yeah. Um, and fundamentally, when you're talking about basic mechanics like these. Um, these are conversations that players simply cannot have. Players cannot talk about boat momentum and how many ticks this boat momentum should last for without <laughs> having it in their hands and trying out, you know, different variations of it, essentially. For sure. Uh, so, you know, I, that's not to say that you can't criticize a concept because you, you can and you should. Um, but at the same time, uh, it can be so, so distant from execution and so, uh, so above you know, so high above, uh, an unreachable height of concept uh, that oh, yeah. it means so little towards the execution overall. Yeah, I think this whole conversation again, sorry to pull back yet more previous skills that we've been a part of pitching, but bad <laughs> once again, I think, man, that was a lot of discussion. Like we had back and forth collectively, like the three of us who worked oh, on yes. it and 
seen a community discussion on it as well and I think that was one thing where we just at the end of the day really struggled with and I remember some of the very early conversations myself with came and only had um, when it was trying to like capture that we, you know we both had this sense and idea for what we thought would be cool mechanics and how it would look and feel and how we'd potentially go about accomplishing that within the constraints and limitations that we all know you know also well within old school and the tick rate and the tile based mm-hmm. and grid based movement and everything like that and it's you know it's all well and good kind of trying to envision that but unless you have absolute kind of concrete fundamentals where you know for certain yep this is how it's going to look this is how it's going to feel this is how it's going to work it can be quite difficult to sort of build things around that because you're building a lot of things off of essentially speculation and i think Mm -hmm. that's where we kind of you know well it just struggled really um we kind of had to you know sort of throw it out there you know caution to the wind and just be like well this is kind of roughly how we see it not going to be able to necessarily list out the exact order of every single mechanic or how it would theoretically work but we have the gist of it in our mind and we think it makes sense and we think it would be fun and maybe other people will too but then also seeing that presented to the community and i think sadly some of it for some people just you know got a bit lost in translation there too and it's Mm -hmm. completely understandable as well right and i think in the grand scheme of things we wouldn't have really mattered necessarily how much we'd gone over it and iterated upon it and you know presented it differently or anything like that I think we would have still come up against similar criticisms or you know roadblocks in many ways um where it's just very difficult to conceptualize and visualize something that's a little bit abstract when it comes to how something is being executed versus the core concept there and all it takes is one person's you know mind thinking it would be executed in one way to then sort of undermine the concept for them and yeah it, it presents a lot of challenges there but yeah so that's why i think obviously this whole approach with sailing and trying to actually figure out a, a core mechanic straight off the bat is you know very very good it's a very solid approach and hopefully this is going to you know do some wonders for just skill design discussion in general within the wider community well fingers crossed it does anyway i'd like to think it would <laughs> um but yeah i think that's you know it 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 helps you solve a lot of problems because once you know even if it's you know not necessarily going to be 100 percent the thing that ends up being in a skill or what have you like as long as you've got that thing you can start building from everything else can fall into place much more logically and more intuitively right if you've got a mechanic set mm-hmm. that you know kind of works you've got the proof of concept then you can actually put content on top of it and start doing things that feel logical and make sense i think that's where again a lot of these elements that we'll go on to talking about a little bit more in depth um yeah really start to shine and benefit from that underlying kind of mechanical identification at the very beginning yeah. Uh, yeah. Going back to Bard a little bit, um, you know, that was one of the one of the great struggles of trying to sell a really basic mechanic. Like if you ever tried to describe Mario's jump, um, yeah, you know, you could lay out a spreadsheet of the different physics and the different interactions it has with the world and and monsters and all that. I don't think they call them monsters in Mario, but whatever. Um, you, you can lay out a spreadsheet of all these different things and try imagine trying to sell that spreadsheet to someone and being like, I have this amazing idea for a game. Here's a spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah. uh, enjoy. <laughs> right. And, you know, Bard had a bit of that problem as well, because there were many fantastic ideas there. But a lot of people got really lost in the sauce and, you know, very much perhaps because we had just too much going on in general. Sure. Um, yeah. But at the very basic level, all you really needed to do to start engaging with the skill was pick up an instrument go to a town center and hit play how do you put that in words that you know (laughs) that won't confuse people how do you tell people you know the experience rates you might be getting or you know what you have to click when every single sentence that you spend doing these sorts of things you lose thousands of views and you know all that interest that comes with that uh and so that's one of the things that um yeah, that the J-Mons will struggle with when they get to pitching their own skills without sure. having something like, um, you know, a, a beta up front. Um, how are they going to sell the basic mechanics when people don't when people don't have it in their hands, essentially? Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of that conversation is going to be it's going to be very heavily skewed towards that that underlying concept. And that another thing mentioned earlier about that, what provides you the initial gut and the most visceral response to them? The largest number of players i think right it's mm-hmm. it's it, it is kind of a shame that that's probably going to be how things pan out but yeah. i guess it's just a reality that we're going to have to sort of accept and with the quirks of how old school is designed and developed and 
the polling system and its various interactions with the community there. Um, yeah, we're kind of inevitably going to lead to those sorts of ideas. I do think sailing, just by definition of its kind of long and illustrious and tumultuous history within the old school community, obviously comes out quite strongly in that regard. So that's sure. why I think this is, again, it's like a very good candidate, I think, to bring forward and try and pin down some mechanics for because the concept sits so strongly in so many players' minds alongside that execution. Yeah, for sure. Anyways, I suppose we should, um, I think we're, what, an, uh, almost uh, coming up to an hour and a half in, and uh, oh yeah. <laughs> we, we've gone through, you know, a quarter of the first page of, of this spreadsheet that we've got, <laughs> <Yeah>. so, <laughs> oh dear. so maybe let's just um, pick up we'll the pace try to cover actually. a couple of things. Um, you know, uh, experience rates, I, I know that's always a big conversation. Um, yeah, I'm simply going to tell you I don't really care. <laughs> yes. um, I, I really don't. Obviously, no, don't Chad make it 10k XP per hour, but <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things that it would take a developer, you know, 10 seconds to change the values of. I uh, I want I would like sailing to be, you know, probably lean towards one of the faster skills that that we have. I think that's just a better idea in general. It's not to you know a Runecraft two, uh, or a Slayer two in that regard. Um, but yeah, I pretty much at the basic level, you get sailing experience from being on the water and moving around. Really small amounts of experience, this what, what I'll call token experience, just to kind of push you through the first levels. Um, but um, this is one of those things where it's like, you know, how simple does the basic core activity of a skill have to be uh, to, um, uh, to give experience? And so for this one, I've just said, if you're moving on the water, you get a little bit of experience. Yeah, um, I think that's a. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I was just going to jump on that one. I think that's yeah. a yeah, fantastic starting point. Like it's, if it was very simple and logical and basic, right? Like a lot of the, a lot of the skill interactions, you just click on that tree, and then every time you get in a log, you're getting some XP. Very simple, intuitive. So I think mm -hmm. just the act of sailing again, really honing in on what is this skill? It is a sailing skill. It is about the act of sailing. So. You know, and it feels logical that any time you are performing a sailing act, so you are moving on your boat, on the water, you're gaining some XP. And then, yeah, I think how that sort of translates into a natural kind of basic layer of XP progression. And obviously, because of any and all various potentially more complicated in involvements of sailing, that would just naturally and kind of like passively exist sort of in amongst everything, mm -hmm. essentially. So I think that's like a nice way of doing that. Obviously, it does still open up bigger questions in terms of... Um, you know how basic should a new skill be in terms of like what kind of basic offerings should it have you know the, the scale of afk ability to high intensity is often discussed quite intensely between players and what people like and what they don't obviously a lot of players really mm -hmm. gravitate towards you know more recent releases of content which is i think generally speaking skewed towards slightly more intensive and engaging largely i think yeah. because the bulk of the game is very low intensity to begin with so a lot of that basis is kind of covered um, but that doesn't mean that players don't like the low-intensity AFK stuff. In fact, they mm -hmm. really, really do. So they I think it's important do. that yeah, any new skill, regardless of what that skill is, really thinks carefully about that dynamic and probably going to want to something, you know, want to have something in place covering at least both ends of that spectrum, right? Like you, you're mm -hmm. going to want to try and cover things that feel good at you know, at least two points on on the spectrum, if not more, preferably. Um, you know, whatever can be allowed within reasonable development time but one one fun thing i want to quickly say on just xp rates in the broadest sense i think a great opportunity with a new skill is to really properly do what a lot of current skills don't do which is properly and adequately reward intensity and engagement because i think we have mm -hmm. far too many skills in game that do offer very high intensity gameplay highly engaging can't look away can't stop clicking for even a second but the xp rates feel pitiful and pathetic and likewise, yeah. you've got the other end of that spectrum where some skills are like brain dead, sit back, chuck a few logs into a brazier and watch a weird wintry monster die. <laughs> and then you get just like hundreds of thousands of XP per hour for doing like <laughs> kind of nothing. And sorry, that was an unnecessary shot to Winter Todd there, but you know. Uh, There's a little bitterness <laughs> in your voice, but, but yeah, that's maybe, right. yeah, maybe. But <laughs> the point being, though, we have a, a weird sort of backdrop of skills and, and that's i think caused a lot of problems for some skills when it comes to trying to expand them because it's like well how do you take a traditionally relatively high intensity skill or at least something that has a fair degree of click you know involvement 
eight actions per minute, that offers a very low XP rate. Because if you mm -hmm. don't really have anywhere to go upwards in terms of offering even more engaging content, then can you justifiably offer more XP? It becomes yeah. tricky to do that. Whereas that's where I think we have a really good opportunity with a new skill to be like, right, blank slate. There's nothing on this XP chart at the minute. So <laughs> this feels like the good opportunity to be like, okay, if this skill is going to have low intensity, really AFK stuff, that's fine. It can totally have that and probably should. But the XP rate, probably going to be moderately low. And likewise, it means if we start at a very low point with the very AFK stuff, it means we can scale much more strongly to, you know, this is going to be very high engaging in this other optional method, but it's also going to be much more rewarding XP wise or well, there's a bit of a matrix there between when you offer XP or whether you're offering like unique rewards or kind of consistent GP farmable materials, whatever else, right? So getting that balance correct is also important, but even just concentrate on XP for the minute. I think that's something that's worth really stressing and highlighting that that's a, it's a golden opportunity that would be a shame to pass up with a new skill, making sure that the level of intensity feels like it's being suitably rewarded, like from, from top to bottom. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, just to, just to be very clear about this design that we have going right here is that we've tried to get a good balance between uh, activities that lean towards the AFK side and, and the more intense side. Obviously, there's limits to how much of this I could actually do within the plugin. Uh, there's a lot more I wanted to do, and just yeah. kind of ran out of time. Um, I, and one such thing, which uh, w which was shipping contracts, which is kind of like, you know, if you have your really basic activity for a skill, this would be that plus one. Uh, so if your basic core activity of the skill is just sailing around, these shipping contracts were you sailing between ports delivering goods. Um, and so the idea of this was to appeal uh, also to that more AFK side, but not quite as AFK as it would be just to, you know, sail around the game world. Um, and I guess just to quickly speak on the topic, um, what was really important to me in putting together sailing skill is that it would have really good grounds within uh, the medieval world. I know that we do yeah. a lot of fantastical things in, in old school. I wouldn't consider it quite a high fantasy. It's some, probably somewhere floating between low and mid. Uh, then again, I feel like high fantasy is, has like its power creep scale where it just keeps going up. And anyway, um, yeah. uh, and so every every activity that you have with sailing has some sort of roots in reality i hope there's going to be a couple a couple more fun ones like krakens of course if you're killing krakens um there's not too many of those in the real world um but i did want to make sure that most of the skill was grounded both between the activities as well as the rewards we're offering if not so much grounded but having like a historical precedent like yeah. we're going to talk eventually about uh these things sailing charms uh these uh a new uh item slot that you can get these uh new charms from doing different sailing activities and equip them well it's the reason i thought of it was because you know there's so many sailor superstitions out there and sailors you know would carry around different um uh different superstitious baubles and charms to you know hope that it would protect them so again, you know, it's it leans into the more fantastical, but there is some sort of medieval historical grounding for it. Yeah, no, for sure. I think um, I think the game is kind of at its best when it it leads with its more medieval side, and then maybe the fantasy stuff is kind of like you dig a little bit deeper, right? You go a little bit further mm -hmm. afield. I mean, in very in in many ways, it kind of feels like the game is naturally laid out like that whereby the, the further out you get, the deeper into quest chains you get, it's like, oh, you're unlocking more and more fantastical locations that are a bit more vibrant, a bit more fantasy-filled. Yeah. You know, you start going underground at different points, you start seeing these weird and wonderful civilizations, you discover or rediscover the cave goblins of Dorgish Khan, and then eventually the mm -hmm. Keldegrim dwarves, and they've got all sorts of interesting industry, and, you know, it starts straying quite a few degrees away from the medieval side of the game. Um, so I think, you know, even just in general, like calling old school a medieval fantasy game can absolutely be called into question based on what we've currently got. But I think the general backdrop feels nicest when the base sort of most accessible entry points to everything feel quite grounded. And then, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the deeper you progress through it, you get some more and more kind of fantastical things emerging. And I think sailing is another good example of just in general as a skill concept feels like it can fit quite intuitively in that. You know, like the bulk of our skills are very grounded in medieval rather than fantasy i mean out of the 
23 skills you've got. you only got like a, I mean, it really is kind of just sort of magic and rune crafting and maybe you sprinkle in a bit of prep, depending on your persuasion, um, <laughs> in terms of like what you would classify as like really overtly fantasy skills. So we're already very kind of heavily built around this idea that you've got a quite a traditional arsenal of skill sets and trades and pursuits and roles that you can perform in your skill system that are all quite grounded in the medieval world. So yeah, I think sailing does have some strengths in that regard. Yeah, absolutely. Anyways, um, continuing on. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> uh, the roundabout um, thing I was trying to say is shipping contracts. You're delivering oh, yes. goods like you would <laughs> as, a, as a medieval uh, merchant. You're delivering goods between ports. You get paid for it. And we've, you know, gone a little bit back and forth about what this payment looks like. I think for the, the most obvious basic level uh, is that you get gold. Um, and now I'm not one to inject, like, I'd, I'd rather we didn't hyperinflate the economy. But at the same time, it would, it really wouldn't make sense if you were delivering goods and you wouldn't get gold. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very fundamental level. Um, and so, and uh, another reward on the side of it uh, was uh, something that uh, we've called doubloons, which the idea of this currency is that you would receive it after doing a shipping contract, and it was something that you could spend at stores, um, in-game stores, as essentially a one-to-one -one gold translation. But anything you bought with them wouldn't actually decrease the shop's stock of that item. So if you were, um, I don't know, if you were going on a Tyrus Helm binge at the, uh, at one of the, what do you <laughs> call them, trading crew members, whatever the you charters? call them. Charter guys, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those, those people, yeah. Uh, you could just keep stocking up on these Tyrus Helms as long as you had doubloons. Um, obviously this, I wanted to do a little more with, um, with rewards from shipping contracts and we'll talk about charms later. Um, I want to do a little more than just this because I like this idea. I, I really like it. It evokes the sense of, I, you've mentioned it before, General Tractor, of, you know, sort of getting access to these back stores because, you know, you're in the know. Yeah. You're, um, you have this currency that, um, uh, makes you privy to trade secrets and that sort of thing. Uh, and so that was, you know, that was a fascinating idea. Uh, is it practical for every player? Will every player, you know, really love these doubloons? Probably not. Um, I, I, I won't deny it's probably something that's going to be used by Irons more. Um, and something that was very intentional was that, well, we can decrease a little bit of um, um, hop, world hopping scape. That, that would be yeah. a good thing. Um, and I don't doubt that even mains will be able to make pretty good use of this as well, especially if these doubloons were tradable, which is probably a can of worms I, I just won't open right now. It could go either way. I don't care too much, to be honest. Um, but that was the idea uh, behind these doubloons, was that um, you would be able to use them at different shops. That shop stock wouldn't decrease. And also, therefore, the shop price, the price of those items wouldn't decrease because the stock hasn't decreased increased prices increase <laughs> yes <laughs> that makes sense yeah yeah anyway uh, did you have any else anything else you want to comment in terms of rewards from these shipping contracts because we've had some conversations about this yeah I don't, it's it's tough to say for sure i think um based on like conversations we've had in the past on it and and thinking i think there is like you know there's scope for all sorts of different things right i mean rewards in general from new skills as i'm sure we're going to keep talking about especially as we get a bit deeper um in and talk about some of the bigger reward ideas um it's like it's fairly contentious in many ways but i also feel like it's a good opportunity to just say right off the bat right now that to me i think new skills kind of need to be sort of separated into two halves of conversation i think the core concept the gameplay the mechanics like what the identity of the skill is versus what the skill is doing and the reward output are kind of two mm -hmm. different things and again for me personally and maybe some folks will feel differently here but i thought like the first half of that conversation is so much more important than the second half because oh, yeah. there are so many different ways you can take a reward output and so many different ways you can make it still you know work effectively and logically and intuitively with a lot of different skill ideas in a lot of different incarnations um but i think one of the biggest things that can be a shame and i think i've especially been guilty of this in the past is looking at a specific reward idea getting a bit disappointed or dissatisfied with it and then dismissing everything you've seen up to that point as a result <laughs> and like i say i'll put my hands up and say you know what i think i was excessively critical of warding when that came out and okay. this is coming from someone who also ended up 
quite heavily involving themselves in warding design and up speaking to some of the old school team even and then I goodness me I throw out a ridiculous multi-page Google document with all sorts of mock-ups <laughs> and things and that still probably exists somewhere it might even be publicly accessible through something because the old school team did actually share like a huge great big colossal design document of warding and oh, that's right. a bunch of my stuff was kind of copy pasted into that and I was like <laughs> oh god I was not expecting that let me tell you but it ended up there um <laughs> and yeah regardless though before I even got to any of that point I think I was coming at warding a little bit excessively negatively because it did do a few things that just left me feeling a bit unsettled and big things like combat related wards and these mm. sort of strange yeah. AOE effects that you'd then be in instilling in, in combat scenarios and ooh, was this like a non-combat skill or was it actually combat affecting oh it did lots of strange things and I think that gnawed away in the back of my mind a lot and probably negatively tainted my entire perception of it from that point on and I think it did for a lot of players um you know we kind of saw with this the conversation surrounding warding like it's a really interesting and fascinating learning point I think to take from um which is how you can absolutely oversaturate people with a particular topic to the point where it just becomes kind of futile to to keep yeah going at it essentially um warding went through multiple iterations and i remember seeing at the time and reading it people were like why why are you still pushing this why are you polling it again it's you know why, why yeah. do you keep it's like hang on <laughs> this has never been polled actually it's still like going through the discussions phase so where's that coming from well again i think it just comes that comes down to that feeling of just oversaturation and it, it, there's just there's such a thing as too much sadly information overload on people and when when it becomes too much it's yeah it's too much but yeah i think the rewards of that one perhaps yeah impacted me a little bit so i think that was the only reason i wanted to bring that up in another tangent before we go like really deeply into rewards on sailing is that i still again on a personal level would feel like i, I don't want to necessarily feel attached to any one thing in in terms of you know what this skill could do and what it's offering and i think it's important to try and you know retain that open mind to an extent and if there is something, then absolutely, you know, give feedback and criticism on any and all points of it. But I think try and hold that in mind at least a bit um, to any people out there who might be listening and not liking any one thing that gets shared. Because <laughs> it's like, yeah, things can be discarded just as easily as they come into being, right? Um, yeah. Anyway, sorry, that was like one big tangent. I thought it was worth highlighting at some point, right? <laughs> Don't get too oh, hung up on one thing. Um, but yeah, no, these like back to the shipping sort of... Uh, mechanics and the rewards that can come from them um yeah i think there's a lot of little ideas i was trying to again we you know discuss this in the past i was trying to figure out what could be interesting sort of unique things that could come from this and obviously i did struggle a little bit trying to figure out something without sort of shoehorning it in but i think there's a lot of interesting areas and territories you could look at in terms of a kind of unique piratical or nautical kind of um goods and things you could perhaps acquire through this means what they would do again i'm kind of being very vague sorry <laughs> there'll be other things that we're less vague about later on but um yeah i, I kind of like the idea of that and i also potentially like the idea of and I'll, I'll bring this up just briefly now because again this is going to be another point of contention for a lot of people but the idea of like optional ways of kind of augmenting a skilling method and changing the reward output perhaps maybe skewing it in one direction or another whether it's more gp or unique rewards you get from it or whether it's more xp and things like that and the idea of maybe some sort of shipping mechanic or otherwise could potentially involve or have you know sort of optional layers where you can perhaps uh increase what is going on in this activity or maybe have some sort of like item syncing or additional delivery methods or you know what have you that essentially turns it into something where you can kind of opt into doing a bit more of something perhaps parting with your own items or something like that in the process item sync related territory in reward and in, in in terms of a uh, then gaining additional reward output, whether that's XP or something else as well. I think that's an interesting area to look into. I know I will say, just based on all manner of different community discussions that have been had out there over the years about this idea of being wary of, you know, the quote unquote buyable skills. I'm mm -hmm. very, very consciously aware of that. And I think there is just a, a deep, quite a, a visceral uh, negative response and reaction a lot of people have to that, which is understandable. Um, it does, I think, call into question how you'd even begin to present something like a production skill if there's just an <laughs> yes. underlying dissatisfaction towards the idea of, you know, viable components of skills, whereby being able to purchase something then helps to facilitate training that skill in some capacity better than if you didn't. Um, I don't know how you get over that hurdle effectively if there's like a really hard line stance that some players take where it's like, 
no, any new skill must never ever be viable in any component whatsoever. Um, I think that's just, you know, that's just another little area that I think is interesting to discuss, whether it be relevant to this training method or a different one or none at all. Um, I think just, you know, thinking over what that could be in terms of optionally sort of augmenting them yourself, maybe opting into systems that allow you to, you know, part with more things in one area in exchange for more things in a different one, right? Like parting with GP or profit potential in exchange for XP, or maybe trading off XP potential and lowering that in exchange for more kind of GP or reward output. I think that's an interesting dynamic to discuss at least. Yeah, for sure. Uh, just to quickly go back to sort of the overarching idea of rewards and skills in general. I'm, yeah. I'm very much with you in that uh, rewards matter a lot less to me than the gameplay, uh, than, than getting the gameplay right. But at the same time, people talk about rewards for very good reasons. Um, oh, yeah. You know, people, people want to know what they get out of a skill and maybe more fundamentally why this skill exists. You know why woodcutting is, exists. It's to generate logs or probably nowadays more to be superseded by PVM. Um, but the, <laughs> the basic idea is that a skill has a function. And I make I use the word function um, kind of synonymously with purpose, but not quite as synonymous with reward. Because I think any activity you can generate, you can try and logic any sort of reward out of it. Uh, for example, if I am trying to make the fire making skill a useful skill, uh, what would happen if I were to come up to you and I, and I would say, okay, I know how to do this. Um, every time you light a fire, there is a one in a million chance that uh, a Gothix God Sword drops. There's this new yeah. Gothix God Sword, the best God Sword. It's like all the other God Swords combined. Um, see, now I've made fire making possibly the most rewarding skill out there. But there is something asynchronous about it. There's something that doesn't quite work. And that's where I want to sort of divide the idea of a function and a reward. A function is more sort of the logical derivative of the action you're taking. Uh, so if you are going to be fire making, the logical derivative is you now have a hot substance to cook your food. <laughs> uh, or, I don't know, a hot substance to, you know, burn a place down or generate ashes, which can be used, I don't know, create soap with it i don't know <laughs> anyways <Somewhere there. laughs> um and and that's a problem that i've had with a lot of uh, more recent well recent the past 10 years of many updates in that uh, a lot of the time visualizing or the, the way the team and the community visualizes making a skill rewarding is giving it a, a, a new mini game or activity that takes that um that, that takes the skill but kind of really warps it so that it doesn't have a direct function to it. Winter Todd does not reward you f for making fires, really. It rewards you for completing a minigame. It gives you these boxes, uh, these loot crates, if you will. Um, and that there is something inherently dissatisfying about that to me, where it's not so much, uh, it's not so much my act of fire making that's given me what fires should give you it's these people arbitrarily deciding you deserve a loot crate for 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 fire making essentially and that's always kind of bothered me and so one thing that again this kind of goes back to you know the grounding of a skill that's one thing i really wanted to work with with sailing is giving it functions uh, not just planting rewards and that's something that happened quite a bit i think with 2015 sailing because what what were some of the rewards they proposed i think it was like augury and rigor uh, maybe the bulk of things we've got in game since then like uh yeah. i think they said vaguely fossil island i think it was all the zenite jewelry maybe that's i think right. they were initially offered with sailing um i'm yeah. fairly certain maybe even some dragon items that we've since gotten oh, through various slayer monsters bosses and raids and whatnot uh, yeah, I think it was a real just scatter shot of stuff that sounds cool, but could yeah. just kind of exist anywhere. And obviously, has log logically shown us, yeah, it absolutely has just existed anywhere now that it's coming to the game in different forms. Yeah, yeah, I exactly. And so that's very much what I wanted to try and avoid with with this version of sailing. I wanted to, because you can draw a logical connection if you sail to an island. Uh, and you explore that island, you might find your dragon claws or whatever. There is a logical connection, but the, the connection is not as close as I'd like it to be. Yeah. What I like as a closer connection is you are sailing a vessel, you're picking up a crate of goods and transporting it using sailing to its destination, and you're rewarded for that because you're, I don't know, boosting the local economy or whatever you're doing. Yeah. Um, and so that was something that um, 
I really wanted to pull off with, with sailing. Um, again, not to overly fixate on rewards because it is less important to me than the actual gameplay itself, uh, but that's just something to keep in mind. Yeah, for sure. Um, probably keep moving on, I suppose. Uh, is there anything worth talking about in, in terms of leveling, not leveling up your boat, different levels of boats? Because uh, currently we have, you know, normal boats, oak, willow, maple, yew, magic, redwood, each with, um, you know, bigger cargo holds so it'll store goods that you collect on the water. Right, that's one thing I should probably specify. I didn't yeah. imagine you having to m maneuver your ship around to go and sta stand right over top an item, uh, an item spawn or, um, you know, if you've just destroyed a ship, I wouldn't expect those items to necessarily just drop on the ground and you have to go through the hassle of maneuvering around to pick it up. Um, that sounded quite, that sounded kind of bad and boring to me, to be honest. So essentially, um, if you get a drop, it's automatically stored in your cargo hold and that cargo hold increases with sort of your tier of boat. Um, yeah, anything you want to talk about in terms of boats? Yeah, I think this is like the the first point where you can look at and see some very nice, clear, simple and traditional runescapey progression, just in its like purest form, right? And in just in a way that I think would hopefully just feel really natural and logical to most people, right? Start with mm -hmm. a nice little basic boat, use all the existing quintessential wood types that you're used to, and work your way up to a nice fancy high tier boat. Um, I think one little thing that's maybe worth pointing out is, again making sure we're kind of staying true to what this skill is and not overstepping its bounds. If we go back again to that Jagex 2015 era sailing pitch, one of the core training methods at the time was shipbuilding. And it was oh, something yeah. that was, you know, something that I personally took point with and ended up, that was one of the big things that I kind of pulled out of mine and replaced it with something else. Although honestly, the thing I replaced it with was kind of equally questionable in some <laughs> respects. But anyway, that's also gone now. But yeah, the, the idea of building your ship being a part of gaining sailing XP to me is never quite sat right because it logically isn't right mm -hmm. it, it's to me that's something that needs to be separated out as its own step and so I think clearly defining that is like yeah you're constructing your ship so what skill is that well, I mean it's it's construction right like that's literally yeah the skill it's in its name it's in the name and <laughs> exactly so I think that's one thing to to keep kind of you know reiterating whenever you're talking any new skill it's like making sure you're doing what that skill is intended for and what the purpose of that skill is and not overstepping its bounds again i think warding perhaps did a little bit of that too much too where it sort of kept treading outside of this idea of it is it just a you know magic equivalent of smithing or is it actually now doing some strange enchanting and imbuing is it doing some sort of skilling interactions is it taking some rune crafting content is it doing things that belonged in other skills essentially yeah um, and that's what i think we need to desperately avoid doing with any new skill edit so starting this with sailing it's like to me straight off the bat shipbuilding in many ways i think is an integral part of the sailing skill but mm -hmm. as a as a prequel right as it as a lead-in to it it's the thing you can do ahead of time before just like you start with a gathering skill oftentimes before you get to a production skill but equally just like you can jump straight into a production skill if you manage to acquire some supplies beforehand i would fully imagine and expect you could do the same with sailing right other ways of acquiring yeah. basic ships maybe just purchasing them with some gp for some of the low level ones or who knows maybe there is you know we have a construction system with an entire flat pack kind of portion that kind of doesn't really get used that much at least not to the best of my knowledge unless there are some strange new metas that i'm not kept up with but um, i don't think so yeah <laughs> but i mean that you know that exists there it's very old very you know traditional to some people so maybe mm -hmm. there's some sort of boat flat pack system that you can you know let other players do the construction work for you and then a little economy is stimulated through that means you can have the constructors supply their boats for their sailors if you just want to train sailing and ignore all other skills then i imagine you'd have some conceivable way of doing so quite you know quite reasonably and consistently there but equally i think you know just to sort of finish up on this point of, of boats and interact with other skills and whatnot i think that's mm -hmm. another thing that a new skill really does present a fantastic opportunity for one of the conversations that tends to come up again and again and again and again is why are we doing a new skill why are we not improving old skills and to oh, me yeah. it's like okay well you know fair enough valid point there's a lot of old skills that do need improving but at the end of the day those are not mutually exclusive things. It's not either or. In fact, like the, the best new skills should be empowering and improving and just generally making better the, all the old schools, or at least some of the old skills, right? Yeah. So 
a new skill in many ways is actually a fantastic opportunity to do that. And, you know, we've had quite frankly 10 years of updating and improving old skills. And as I think the old school team have even said themselves, there's never really going to be an end point for the game. <laughs> like, it's not that sort mm-hmm. of game. It's, you know, most areas of the game are kind of infinitely expandable. So, will there ever be a point where we say, okay, this skill is just finished? It never needs updating again, ever. It's done. Probably not, right? There's always going to be some reason to be, you know, dissatisfied with some element of a skill. And then when one skill gets updated, it's like, well, why hasn't this one been brought up to that level? So I think that conversation is going to be perpetually ongoing. If we always restrict ourselves to saying, well, we can't do a new skill until we've fixed up the old skills and improved them all. It's like, well, okay, I guess we're never going to get a new skill then. I'm sure that makes some people happy, but I think clearly, uh, well, we now have a number, I guess, 80% of people would probably not be so happy. So I think it's important to to look at that at a real kind of top level and see, okay, sailing skill, construct ships. Well, that right there is a perfect opportunity for just a little construction expansion to coexist alongside sailing. And one of the big Mm -hmm. criticisms of construction, one of its inherent design flaws, is just how self-contained and restricted it is at the minute. It's like 90% in just a POH instance. You don't see other players or interact with the outside world. It wasn't until Mahogany Homes that we actually had a bit of construction on the overworld for the first time and started seeing the skills presence felt a little bit more and i think that was some good first steps to take but you know there's a lot more that could be done and i think sailing would be another nice little step forward for something like construction right having a bit more of a present overworld um, form of construction where you can build ships or again this is where you can get very granular if you want to and get lost in details and concepting all sorts of wonderful things i think because the ship is so integral to the identity of sailing right like you I mean, you physically can't do it without the ship. That's, that's right there in the name. I think mm-hmm. that serves as a good you know, basis and foundation on which to build lots of interesting and weird and potentially wonderful things, right? With ship customization options and different little embellishments or figureheads or different sails or options there. Maybe you've performed certain accomplishments or accolades in other areas of the game and you can use those to sort of augment or change your ship in some way or upgrade it. And maybe there are other skill interactions too, not just construction, but perhaps you can smith on special kinds of cannons or craft special kinds of rudders or anything like that right that there's yeah. to me in, in many ways the sky is the limit there but as like a base introductory system you know simple logical progression basic ships starting at a low sailing level that you can begin constructing if you want to with a low construction level that you know scales in a relatively intuitive way up to the high levels with better materials used better ship capabilities again how that manifests could be so many different things depending on what gameplay ultimately emerges from a sailing skill right you tailor it to whatever you end up with essentially um but yeah i think there's a lot of potential there but that's just like a core area i'd really want to you know drive home to people about this idea of making sure whatever skill you pick in this case if it's sailing concentrate on the active gaining sailing xp and sailing training needs to be the act of sailing so anything that's sort of supporting that let's keep it in the skills where it belongs but then use that as an opportunity to improve those skills and showcase how you can not just do a new skill but improve old skills at the same time and do two in one yeah, absolutely. And it's it's good that you point out just general interactions between skills, because this tends to be a pretty hot topic when it comes to new skills, especially when you start talking about rewards and sort yeah. of uh, what skills are affected downstream. Because, you know, every I it, there's this ephemeral uh, point at which people will hopefully agree where you get the amount of interaction with other skills right. It doesn't make sense to introduce a new skill if it doesn't touch any other skills. Yeah. Um, I feel that's pretty much a defining feature of a skill is that it interacts with other skills. Um, how much of you, how much that you do that is going to vary quite a bit with the skill that you're talking about or, or the new skill you're talking about. Um, something many people have pointed out, and I tend to agree, um, is that you know, a new skill shouldn't try and affect every other skill. I am... I yes. think there's a certain level of invasion that people don't want on their sort of core RuneScape experience, which, um, you know, it's <laughs> our core RuneScape experience has changed so much in the past 10 years. Yeah, yeah, true. Uh, but at the same time, it makes sense to try and pace it. I think if you're going to try and sell um, current old school RuneScape to players in 2012, um, right around the time of EOC, they might have very much rejected it. Uh, because that wasn't the experience they wanted. They wanted a pure, you know, un, untampered with RuneScape to play with. They, they, yeah, I, I think that was kind of the general sentiment at the time. Hmm. Um, and 
And so it's always a big question, how much then should this skill interact with other skills? I've tried, we've tried to keep it somewhat limited at least, um, but as you said, we can always go deeper. Right now, if you look at the sort of boat building table, uh, you'll notice that first off, yes, you can straight up skip the boat building process for your really low tier boats, your, your normal, your oak and your willow, or you could just buy it from another player, I suppose, there, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but in, in terms of the ingredients, I've given you logs, I've given you bars and bolts of cloth. Well, if you wanted to have more interaction here, you could make it so that you can't use regular bolts of cloth. Maybe you need to use different tiered bolts of cloth that can only be uh, made with crafting. Or maybe instead of just having a bunch of bars in your inventory, maybe you actually need to go to an anvil, smith these bar bars into... I don't know what you use on ships, beams, I suppose, yeah, I like beams, nails, um, or, and maybe these logs, you first need to use uh, crafting or fletching to turn them into, oh boy, you should maybe talk about planks. Um, yeah. yeah, because that's, that's another conversation attached to this is, you know, do we use logs or do we use planks? Logs gives us more tiers, planks is more directly, um, more directly uh, construction material. Um, uh, but I'll, I'll leave that to the side. Uh, and so, especially once we come around to some of the re rewards, you can go almost infinitely deeper into skill interactions. We'll eventually talk about um, uh, fishing, uh, your offshore fishing, and the rewards you get from it um, include these new fish that you have to do a little bit of a recipe to put them together, more like a traditional cooking item like like a cake you'd have to put the spice together with the fish and then cook the fish essentially you can go infinitely deeper into that sort of stuff um and in, in and in such skill interactions in general i've kept it fairly tame uh, <laughs> i don't know if you remember general tractor um one yep. of my earlier designs of exploration had pretty much a full cooking expansion uh, integrated into it i think i vaguely remember <laughs> a bit of that yeah yeah, and so it's one of my long-standing things that I want you to do more with your skills, but what's the right context for it? Yeah. Is sailing a good context to have a full cooking expansion, a cooking 2.0? Probably not. But that, that is to say the, these designs are still flexible. We can do more with it. We can do less with it. Maybe players don't want you to construct your boats at all. Be very sad. Maybe they just want you to buy boats from, from port masters. Yeah. And, all right, fine. We'll just cut out the construction portion. Um, yeah, just don't. Yeah, just don't treat it all as definitive. Um, we we feel we've hit a pretty decent balance, but it's absolutely not definitive. Yeah, not for sure. Um, well, let's let's try and get through this first page of the Excel document here. <laughs> yes, oh dear. <laughs> um, right. We should probably talk about traveling in general. Um, so obviously. When you're mo moving on the water, you're going to be moving on spaces that you were previously, uh, you couldn't move on at all. Uh, this means that um, you're going to be able to go faster through certain areas of the game, uh, especially because boat speed uh, it can be higher than your regular run speed. Um, being able to travel on water means you're going to be able to skip areas that you weren't able to skip before. And so that's going to... It's not going to completely overhaul movement, absolutely not, because most of the time you need to move around, especially as you start to progress in later levels, is really niche scenarios, small contained activities. Um, you know, you're not going to be using a, a boat to, to move around uh, TOA. Unlikely to happen, I suppose. Um, these, and, and so what this kind of revolution, not quite revolutionizes, I'm really struggling with my words here. <laughs> this will probably primarily help your lower level players who have lower level agility and who don't have the access level of teleports as you do. Yeah. It's probably going to help most players to at least a certain degree. But remember that any benefit from transportation over water is only going to occur on water. And most of the time in game, you're probably moving across land mass or just plain, good old plain earth. Yeah. Um, and so, again, it'll probably help lower level players more than higher level players because, as many people have rightly pointed out, uh, higher level players are just teleport everywhere. And so it's called into question, um, you know, why have a sailing skill if one of sailing's main functions is transportation, but you can just instantly transport yourself places? Um, 
And so one of the answers that we've we've had to this is this idea of fast traveling, which, <laughs> I mean, is not new by any means. <laughs> For sure. Um, but essentially what it looks like uh, is that at any port or any boat launch, boat launch is being the place where you start sailing, kind of your, uh, your interactable node that turns you from a, a human character into a boat on the water. Um, you can instantly travel from any of those places, which are quite spread throughout the map, to any port if you have the appropriate sailing level. Again, it's not going to revolutionize travel a, a ton. It's going to make some patterns faster, getting to certain places a lot easier than it was before, but it's not going to be anything crazy. You're still going to be relying probably mostly on your teleports and good old running around with the stamp pot. Um, a little addition to the end of this table is these custom uh, options where you get to choose one of the boat launches, which again are spread pretty much throughout the world, and be able to instantly transport from a boat launch to that boat launch. You can have up to three of these custom, uh, custom fast travel destinations set at a given time. And so this all together is kind of our little appeal to the historical medieval function of sailing as a system of travel. Um, I don't know if you have anything to add on that. Uh, no, not too much, other than just, I think this is one of those areas where maybe there'll be a, a couple more as we get deeper in that. It, I think when it comes to sailing, there are a few core things that just kind of have to be a given that I think are just so well ingrained within the skill for so many people that they're going to need to be present in some capacity. So yeah, just the idea of fast traveling in general and using sailing to go from some location right on the coast to another one, ports otherwise, um, I feel like it's just like very logical, obvious and intuitive to exist and kind of needs to exist in some capacity, whatever incarnation of sailing skill takes. So mm -hmm. this is again, one of those ones where I kind of feel like probably for all the reasons you've listed as well in terms of like the abundance of transportation options for the, kind of the average and especially higher level players and whatnot and teleportation and all sorts um this isn't going to be like some crazy game changing like revolution to uh, mm -hmm. anything by any means but to me it's just kind of like the the sort of necessary passive underlying to a lot of it right like it just kind of like i think it needs to be there in some capacity but it doesn't necessarily have to be the focal point and i think that's where maybe some of the you know skill pitches or incarnations of sailing in the past where it's put that, that whole transportation element really at the forefront much like we began this whole sort of conversation and ramble on sailing about with those you know various versions of sailing using it as just a means to an end so it's literally yeah. just your transportation your vessel to get from point a to point b of course yeah it's going to exist in the skill but i think this mm -hmm. entire pitch and the way we're going with this is much more like yeah, that's going to be there. You know, it's it's a part of it, but it's not like the identity of sailing necessarily. So that'd be the thing I'd yeah. probably like point towards more here. It's like, yeah, this can exist. And yeah, maybe it's, you know, it can be expanded upon if players really want more kind of in-depth, fast travel, boat-based transportation there. Or it can be, you know, scaled back a bit if players don't want a super amount of that added. But regardless, I think it's probably going to be there in some capacity, but I don't think it should, you know, necessitate being the focus, right? So... For me, it's one of those areas where, like I said, a few more things to get to later on, where it's kind of like, yep, that's kind of a given, and it's clear that some players will be expecting that, and if it doesn't turn up in a sailing skill, it would be kind of odd to omit it, so it's just, yeah. it's kind of there. Yeah. Okay, well, let's quickly move on to uh, trials. I, I probably don't have much to talk about this. It, it's one of the many things, when you think of a sailing skill or any sort of transportation in general, People are going to ask, uh, can I race with it? Can I do obstacle courses with it? Um, and so that's pretty much all it is. Um, the idea would be that, is that there's these different trials set throughout the world, um, just little obstacle courses, and um, you're given a set path through it. You have to get through that path as fast as possible. Um, I think the one thing that I really want to highlight with this is that, um, and, and I'm really afraid of this happening with the plugin actually, is that people are going to set their sail speed to the top speed and try and do it and just try and get yeah. through it as fast as possible with, you know, reckless abandon. And throughout my testing, I could make these trials easier, to be honest, but throughout my testing, I found that that does not work. It does not work at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so pretty much the idea is that this would be a pretty active uh, form of, trailing, uh, of training sailing. Um, 
you know, going on our spectrum of AFK to, you know, hyper intense, it probably leans a little more towards the intense side. Um, just as with any sort of, um, like even Hallowed Sepulchre, people have it, you know, memorized to a T. You're eventually going to probably memorize all the different paths of each trial, um, you know, get it down and fast. Uh, but the hope is that it, you know, not only gives you good experience, but also really refines how well you manage your controls. Uh, because the, the current iteration of sailing, it's not quite as simple as something like mining or fishing. It does require a little bit of effort. Now, if you're on the open ocean, it's it's very easy. You click in direction and you, and you go. Uh, trying to dodge around things that are in a dense area, that's going to be a lot more challenging. Um, and so I'd what I'd really like to see is people, uh, is people sort of developing uh, these skills uh, and you know challenging each other to uh, get world best. That's something that I've always found with different um, agility courses like Prif, uh, is being able to compare myself to other players and see how well I've done. Yeah, absolutely. I think this trials thing is again like a nice counterpoint to that traditional like we just mentioned about. Um, you know, using sailing as just the means of getting from point A to point B, but the you know, the important part being the destination, right? And then getting off and doing whatever off of your ship. But I think trials serve as that nice counterpoint where it's like, no, the actual the purpose of this is like honing your art of sailing, right? The actual act of sailing itself and making sure you mm -hmm. kind of you know get in tune and in sync with your controls and the mechanics and be able to definitely navigate through whatever obstacles kind of come your way and i could definitely see this thing you know if it was implemented in all the right ways i could definitely see it really tapping into that core part what seemingly quite a lot of players have really been enjoying in recent years and you've got more of that sort of um you know engaging slightly tactical slightly more intensive form of gameplay where you're really thinking about um you know well, movement in particular, right? Like a lot of movement-based mechanics we've seen in a number of different activities and just having that that level of engagement, I think, and the ability to push yourself to improve, right? Like the anything with a, a bit of a time limit does that really simply and easily, right? Like Sepulchre is, again, just like one of the big ones that stands, yeah. stands out amongst all other things there where it's really simple and easy to see yourself Firstly, you know, attempting something and then gradually improving as you get to grips with it and eventually kind of mastering it as you really, um, you know, learn to, to perfect the various nuances of how to navigate through various bits of that course and uh, whatnot. So I could see that this trials kind of being a, a very similar thing. And I think it's just a lot of fun here, potential for like, you know, yeah. lighthearted, socializing style, style of a uh, gameplay, right? A bit of friendly competition here and there, perhaps between friends, you know, people training at the same time whether again all you know kind of dependent on how things could be implemented or what structure they ultimately take um but you know there i could totally envision you know, some hypothetical variants of this where there's you know it's able to sort of multiple people try and navigate the same course at the same time mm -hmm. kind of thing and getting a bit of a chaotic mess but trying to come out on top and seeing what kind of hilarity yeah. would ensue there and then you know expanding it even further whether you want to you know talk about really grand scale things like having like ultra large scale trials rather than just being what you know a lot yeah. of kind of training methods really are really tiny self-contained game loops right oftentimes just a few seconds long that are then repeated hundreds of thousands of times and so i don't know what's interesting to me is the prospect of kind of flipping that and having these optional layers of skills or a new skill where it's like well what if the you know what if the gameplay loop was actually very very long and you only did it once or twice um, mm -hmm. Again, just you know, bringing up Sepulchre once more, that's kind of what that is, right? If you're doing like a full Sepulchre run from start to finish to the bottom, you know, it's not an, a quick and instant thing there, right? Like you're going through each floor, you're having to navigate each set of obstacles until you eventually loop back to the beginning again and start again. Um, so, yeah, I think there's like a lot of interesting potential with this, you know, having like big sort of island-wide trials right like sail all the way around fossil island as quickly as you can through all the right little flag posts and, and obstacle points yeah. or you know go all the way around karamja as like a mid-level one or maybe there's a big full you know mainland continent of gilinor to try and sail all the way through as a trial and you could spend i mean i don't know like minutes minutes and minutes and minutes on that right like it would take quite a long time mm -hmm. to uh do a full a full lap of that so i think just the potential of what trials have quite it could just be quite fun, like genuinely dynamic enough and varied enough to offer 
a lot of kind of interesting levels of engagement and variety that I think a lot of players are kind of looking for these days in a skill to keep it, mm-hmm. you know, exciting and interesting. Yeah, uh, and to kind of add on to that, there, there's so many different ways you can take these as well. Uh, you know, the iterations I put in the plugin are really basic, completely static. There's a single route through them. Uh, but, you know, it would be cool to see maybe moving obstacles that you have to dodge around or yeah. maybe even monster chase you part of the way through um, through the trial. Or maybe there's patches of weeds that will slow you down or, or currents that speed you up. Or maybe in a certain trial, the wind is just shifting rapidly, like it's spinning, spinning you in circles, essentially. And you, have to, you have to be really fast on, on your controls. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you mentioning, uh, you know, uh, doing uh, much larger trials uh, really brings to mind, um, I don't know if you watch or have kept up with uh, Soup's Gillenor games. Oh, I've, I've not seen some of those recent ones, no. Oh, that's all right. Uh, very, very entertaining. Such, yeah, such absolutely. good quality entertainment. Um, one of the one of the greatest challenges he does, and he's done it several times, it's essentially where it's a race, but with PvP elements. You yeah. know, dragon spears or entangles or, or that sort of stuff. I, I imagine doing something similar with these boats where you have this lengthy trial, but maybe your different cannonball types uh, can you know slow each other down yeah. or entangle each other or um you know make them make their boat turn off to the left or right for a tick you know that would I, there's just so many amusing ways that you could take this i i think it's got for something so basic it's got quite a bit of potential i think yeah i mean just on that topic again you know it's and again like stressing i think it's nice for any any new skill, I think is going to want to offer like meaningful options and choices. Like we we don't want to fall into those pitfalls and traps of the past again. Like the the big one being like the old dungeoneering where it felt like oh the only way you could interact with this skill was just this one big mini game and then that was it. Yeah. No choices. Like any new skill we get in old school, I think it has to be so far removed from that. Right, like giving player choices, giving player options. I think it's one of those areas where it's got so much potential for different options. Like you just said, like a bit of fun pseudo pvp elements like I, I could totally see that existing almost as its own like self-contained portion of a trial system where maybe they're just like wilderness yeah. trials right like the northern wilderness <laughs> oh, is just you know you sail along the coast of the wilderness and that's where your ships suddenly have pvp enabled and so all the trials there are just like kind of dangerous and maybe you get special kinds of loot and cargo that you sort of sail over and pick up i'm, I'm picturing now um if you ever played uh, the old Zelda game Wind Waker, obviously set predominantly on a oh, boat. I've seen across, much of it. Yeah, like a huge open ocean. And there are lots of little, like, I love what happens in that game where you have little, like, almost pseudo random events where as you're sailing through, you'd have, like, maybe a little barrel would pop out of the ground with a little rupee on top. And as long as you, it's just out of the way that you're currently heading. So it's like, oh, if you're paying attention, just steer, you know, your course a little bit left and go over it. And it's like, boom, you can, like, dink over it and gather a little extra reward, right? Gain a bit of money. Mm. I can totally picture things like that, as you mentioned, with, you know, if it was technically possible to have like movable um, kind of uh, flag points or markers or anything like that, um, I could totally see some elements of that existing in a trial where it's like little dynamic parts of it. It's like, oh, here you go. If I go this way, there's a little like a, a bobbing treasure chest that's, you know, in the surface there and you go over it and loot it. And again, maybe that's how you tie in these wilderness trials parts. You picked up some loot, but if another player comes along and is doing the same trial, they can fire their cannons at you to try and take that chest that you just picked up from your, you know, yeah. <laughs> from your hull and... <laughs> What, see what happens when you get to the end but yeah to me this is yet another area where i think the underlying concept of this is like pretty solid i think there's a lot of really fun potential and much like with i think many different parts of this skill or you know a lot of other skills the sky is kind of the limit in terms of where you could hypothetically take it and again i think stressing that layer of kind of choice and option and variety not necessarily dictating this is the one type of thing you must do um this is the only way to effectively train it's like no i think it'd be nice to just really cover a broad spread of things right like maybe you just want to do a really simple one even if it is just in this one system of trials like within trials themselves you you could have simple basic trials that you can happily do over and over again maybe you know bigger more complex ones or maybe those like you know expansive rewarding pvp-esque ones as well i think Hmm. again there's there's so much potential there yeah, I think it's good to stress that this is very much us wish listing, of course. Yeah. Um, but it's, <laughs> but unlike well, a lot of wish listing that's done, especially around new skills, are really grandiose, massive designs. Again, you know, talking multiple years of development, this is something that is mostly already implemented in in a plugin. And me taking you know about two months of my life to to put this together, I've managed to to get most of the way there yeah. putting moving obstacles or uh, weeds or currents or uh, you know 
interactions between ships is only one step further than than what I've already done. What 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 I mean to say is that these are very reachable, attainable goals. Yeah. Anyways, um, we should probably keep moving on. Naval combat. That's kind Ooh, of yes. that's a probably a pretty big topic. Mm. Um, as I mentioned, this was the this was the piece that made me, you know, say pretty much aloud, you know, this is really satisfying. I really like this. I'm now fully sold on uh, <laughs> on the idea I'd already been working on for probably yeah. you know, dozens of hours, to be honest. <laughs> Um, and probably, well, just to give a quick overview, your cannon has a given range. Uh, if your target is in range and you hit the fire cannon button, a cannonball flies towards them. Now, not everything about the system is fully set in place. And something uh, that we've chatted about before, uh, but never really came to a conclusion, and the plugin hasn't concluded, is, you know, how are targets selected, for example? At the moment, uh, if you hit the fire cannon button, every single target in range is uh, gets a cannonball, pretty much. Yeah. So if you know if there's a single seagull, it gets a cannonball. If there's a dozen seagulls, there's a dozen cannonballs flying out from your ship. <laughs> yep. Uh, I think in the overview, I have one little clip of this happening. Uh, in fact, I think there's too many objects on screen that it actually hides the ship for a second. <laughs> um, but it's a great question, you know how is targeting going to work or do we need targeting because i won't deny part of my incentive for uh not fleshing this out further in the plugin uh is a i didn't have much time and b because it's fun yes i cannot deny that seeing those cannonballs fly out and the experience drops just you know hit the screen there is something wonderfully dopamine infusing brilliant about that um is it would it be the most practical maybe maybe not like if you're starting to talk pvp scenarios then you know it might not be so practical or maybe there needs to be um you know some sort of maybe you can't target clan members or something on that line um but yeah i i found it really fun um other systems though could be uh for example and i don't really want to lean into it um a tab targeting system so you hit yeah. tab or you hit a button in the menu and it rotates between the different available targets on screen something i probably want to lean away from if you want to do anything something probably a little more grounded um maybe the closest thing in range that's probably one of the more sensible ways about it but this doesn't have to be universal for each cannonball and something that um, I'd really like to see explored, and I have explored a little bit in, in the overall concept, is the idea of having different cannonballs or different cannons or different weapons entirely with, you know, different ranges. Um, you know, maybe it's maybe a, a skill shot that's much more narrow in range, so you have to, you know, be much better on your timing, um, but maybe does a lot higher damage. Or... Uh, maybe a cannonball type that uh, sends multiple projectiles to each target in range. Um, there was a, a bit of a glitch at one point where instead of targeting each uh, monster in range once, it targeted that monster for each square that they occupied. Oh, yeah. And so, <laughs> General Track, have you seen how big the Mega, the oh, mega yes. Kraken is? Oh, yes. I, yeah, he's a big boy. And so I got close to him and I had this machine gun that melted the poor lad in, in like, you know, three, three rounds of fire. <laughs> and, you know, I knew I'd broken something, but it was hilarious. It was fun. You just see these cannonballs fly so fast at this at this Kraken. Oh, man, I, <laughs> I was tempted in a way to leave it, but then I'd have to rebalance and rejig way too many things. I don't know if you, you wanted to add a little bit to that. Yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah, I like sort of both of those points. The first one for me, again, I, I completely echo your comments. Like, I think the naval combat bit was the first bit for me that I said to you, I was like, this is just like fun. Like that, this is it's genuinely <laughs> just fun. It really is. Even it's, you know, fairly simple form. I think that actually adds to it. And again, mm -hmm. it kind of, it speaks to the whole discussion point around, okay, like what what is old school as a game? The game is at its core, a very simple game like almost every interaction is just a you know a point click and wait like you're sort of clicking on a thing watching a thing happen at the end of it 
there's not a whole lot of complexity on the surface level, right? You can dig a little deeper, as most of us who've been playing for far too long have done so, and you can see where there is obviously some like really nice and genuinely unique complexity and depth and all sorts of things you can really delve into if you want to. Um, but on a surface level, most things are really simple. And so I think that's what I actually really liked about this, with this sort of initial incarnation of it. It was just, it was very intuitive and very simple, and that simplicity, I think, added to its effectiveness. Being able to see, okay, I roughly know what my range is, and you put in a very handy little overlay that you can press a button on in the plugin and see, okay, my cannon's range is currently this, so if I'm going past something that's in there, then it's going to hit it, and then just, boom. Like Again, speaking of like yeah. keyboard controls, that felt very, <laughs> very just intuitive and streamlined and simple to use. You know, just like tap on space bar to go boom, watch the cannons fly out of it, or the cannonballs fly out the cannon and yeah. hit the targets. And yeah, there was something great about that. And you know, seeing a little XP drop alongside it just adds to the oomph, perhaps. Or you know, there, yeah. there is so much. Um, I think there's so much great potential there. And again, the second point you're kind of saying about, um, you know, the minute it kind of attacks everything. But once more, this is another. I think part of the skill where because it does feel so good at a, a basic level where there's so much room for potential expansion and different ways you could change it, right? Like you could totally conceivably just start with a, a simple system where, okay, maybe you actually do tone it down a bit and the first ship you get has a single, like a simple like single barrel cannon and a, a one shot, one target firing system. And it goes like you say, maybe a, you know, a closest target it picks, but then maybe that's a part of the progression system of sailing as a skill or improving your boat. Maybe that's something that you actively choose to upgrade about your ship. You get like multi-targeting or you know, dwarven multi-cannon capabilities type of things uh, into your cannon. So it kind of improves it. I think, again, another really nice thing about a new skill is you are starting with that. Once again, it's that blank canvas, right? Like you can start from any point you want to and kind of reach any point you want to. So if you kind of envision how big and bold you want to go at the top end, you can kind of start you know maybe relatively benign and subdued and then kind of ramp it up quite quickly so you can really feel like powerful points of progression as you get deeper into a sailing skill and i think those are the kinds of things that really make leveling a skill for starters feel so much more satisfying when you can see that impact and i think combat naval combat in particular for a sailing skill has huge potential in that regard to have some real visible tactile and tangible feeling upgrades that you could potentially kind of tie into the skill and feel like every single level up you're getting means something when you hit one of these new kind of ship components or combat capabilities that your ship can now kind of engage with so yeah i think this yeah. to me is is it's a very exciting part of it and it's yeah like actually another very brief point to mention is how it kind of works then it's i think another reason why it feels so satisfying is it's kind of is it right to say it's kind of devoid of rng at the minute i suppose isn't it it's very much it's limited yeah so it's it's like well i guess the main thing i noticed was it's like i'm not standing there hitting like a perpetual cycle of zeros being like why aren't you killing this kraken <laughs> right and i think that that was something that immediately again just jumped out to me as like that makes this feel so much nicer that i know yeah. like every hit is hitting something even if it's rolling between you know a certain numbers set of numbers that it could hit i'm not just sitting there like making no progress so i don't know that's another little interesting area to maybe you know think upon or muse over when it comes to sort of rng and different elements of it and because this is a you know unique style of combat in and of itself right it's like separate completely detached from the combat system as it were it's its own unique mechanic and its own unique system it kind of has the flexibility to sort of do its own thing right and i think that's what it is doing yeah. at the minute and that's part of why it feels so satisfying and yeah different there so yeah yeah, I won't deny. Well, there's a bit of a double incentive for making it so that you're always given guaranteed hits. Yeah. Um, the first is that then I'd have to replace the uh, replace the red sprite with a blue sprite. It was kind of annoying. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but uh, perhaps more importantly is because because you're already involving a movement system to be able to get your cannons right. It felt important to reward players for being able to pull off that shot. Absolutely. Yeah. Not that it's all that hard to do so, but at the same time, it was much more satisfying you line up a shot you hit the button you score a hit um and so yeah you'll never hit below a certain threshold and i think that threshold increases with your tier of boat pretty sure yeah i can't remember now um anyway um and also part of what would make it a fundamentally good system uh is how well the encounters are built up as well uh because just like you have monsters all throughout the game with different game mechanics this is something that would really benefit sailing as well you're given a whole new movement mechanic a whole new attacking mechanic it makes sense to have monsters that work with that yeah and so just as you don't hit zeros monsters don't hit zeros on you either 
every time they land a hit, it's a, it's guaranteed damage. And so what I like about this is that it incentivizes you to maneuver yourself well around them. If you've tried to tackle crocodiles, they'll always try and get right up close to you. So if you're going fast enough, you can maintain distance from them and fire on them and essentially spin circles around them. Um, it's, you know, it requires a bit of effort for sure. Um, and it's, it's not something you absolutely have to do. Uh, if you wanted, you could just sit there and, and shoot them as they're attacking you, you're, they're chomping at your boat or whatever. Um, but it's going back to that idea of, you know, rewarding extra effort in your gameplay. That's exactly what I kind of wanted to do here. And I think you could explore that in so many different ways. Um, I don't want to give too many spoilers about how the Mega Kraken works, um, but if you get too close to him, uh, he'll give you, <laughs> instead of shooting these little fireballs at you, he'll give you a nice chunky bite, which <laughs> yeah. I think can hit like up to 400 or something like that. Ouch. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> so now you have to think about, okay, you need to maneuver around. You want to maneuver into a place that um, isn't too close to the Kraken, isn't too close to his tentacles, um, but at the same time, you, if, you've, um, if you've tried it out, you'll notice that every time you get hit from the Kraken, whether it's its tentacles or its fireball or whatever else, if you are moving at three or four tiles per tick, I'm really struggling with that one, <laughs> three or four tiles per tick, um, it'll actually give you a little defense boost. So you won't take as much damage as you would otherwise. Yeah. So you're given this little a little split between you know you want to be in an ideal position but at the same time you want to be moving quickly and that's actually something that is actually a mechanic that underlies the rest of combat as well but the defense bonus you get is much smaller um so you know even if you're attacking crocodiles if one gets a little bite off of you um if you're moving faster you can get i think it's up to a 20 percent damage reduction if you're going at absolute full speed yeah. Um, again, these are things that I want to incentivize, not force. Um, and I think it's a lot more fun that way because, again, you get rewarded for putting in more effort. Yeah, no, I can totally see this being the kind of thing where, again, just hypothesizing the amount of additional layers you could start adding on before you get too kind of overly complicated or convoluted. Because I guess that is always one big thing you need to be cautious of, which is, again, why I think it's nice starting with a relatively simple base experience of what this looks like in terms of naval combat but um yeah i think at that sort of that top end it's it's very easy to imagine you know the veteran players who really love that you know min maxing every little thing getting really engaged with it and finding some crazy cool interesting ways of you know working these systems and again seeing your mega crack and it's uh, i mean you can only immediately you know, can't, can't help but immediately start thinking about all the other possibilities of interesting sea monsters and what that could look like and just playing around with scale a bit more than perhaps traditionally mm -hmm. happens you know with one big luxury of having a, a currently giant open and empty ocean is that you've got a lot of space and the one thing we don't have on the mainland is a lot of empty space so you know yeah. why not take advantage of that a little bit you know play around with some things that you know are built on a slightly bigger scale but makes sense you know a giant monster and maybe there are some things that you know, incentivize some group-based gameplay. Different people in different ships all attacking different parts of the same monster simultaneously, trying to do different effects. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, maybe this is best saved for like a, a later discussion about, you know, what the concept of sailing raids or big expansive gameplay expansions could actually look like within it. But yeah, again, yet another area where I think really nice sort of simple and accessible entry point and so much potential, like as you keep going further and further into it. Yeah, no, it actually, you just talking about that brought to mind, like, you know, what if you had this Megalodon boss, which, you know, would chase after one player at a time, you know, that player's yeah. goal would then be to run as fast as away as possible while the others were are trying to barrage this Megalodon from the side. Um, again, it just opens the door for so many new mechanics. And it's not like, you know, every once in a while you hear someone complain uh, about um, old school potentially running out of mechanics because our mechanics are so basic. Yeah, I, I'm. I think I'm. I think, and I hope that TOA is, you know, disproven that we can't do anything new, despite having, you know, relatively basic systems to set up with. Yeah. But this would certainly open up a lot more doors, um, just based on the you know basic mechanics of movement and you know the opportunities that this sort of firing uh, mechanism allows for. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so 
probably move on. Um, let's chat about saltwater scaling. Oh yes. So the ba yeah, the basic idea is that, um, well, just to give a bit of an overarching idea, because we're opening the doors to you being able to move over water, it's essentially like, kind of like a whole new landmass that we're, we're allowing you to traverse. And just like any new area expansion, it probably needs something a little more, uh, a little more than nothing. Uh, it probably shouldn't be, you know, as dense as Verok, uh, maybe as sparse as the desert, somewhere, maybe somewhere between the two. Yeah. Uh, but the general idea is that, you know, sailing is quite literally your vehicle to engage in some uh, skilling activities on the ocean. Um, and so we've got uh, a couple categories of this. We've got offshore fishing, dredging for minerals, uh, seabird hunting, and coral farming. I don't know if you have any off the top of your head thoughts on these, General Tractor. Yeah, for sure. I think it's worth, again, highlighting where some of these kind of come from. It all stems from this same idea that we've mentioned like multiple times over now, where, you know, trying to continuously keep at the forefront of our mind, you know, what is the act of sailing as a skill? There you are, you're on your boat, you're in the open ocean. If we're trying to avoid these same pitfalls and, and trappings that so many times we do, which is, you know, a sailing skill pitch comes along, let's sail to the island and then get off our boat so we can start hunting this creature. Let's get off so we can start mining these ore rocks, right? It's like, mm -hmm. well, again, that's that's not utilizing sailing to the best of its abilities. And it's just doing more of the same content that already exists in game or could just continue existing anywhere else. So Again, this was that attempt at looking at things like, okay, mentioning earlier about synergies between skills, and I think any good new skill should be like interacting with at least you know a couple or a number of different existing skills and hopefully doing so in a way that improves and enhances them and bolsters their capability, offers new ways of engaging with similar or old familiar things, or just offers brand new avenues entirely that almost serves as like like mini little expansions that add an additional layer of variety to those old skills on top. And so that's where this kind of saltwater skilling comes from. It's that idea of, okay, well, you're on a boat, you're sailing, as Noam said, you're moving through the water. Well, what things kind of feel logical or what what things feel intuitive there? What areas mm -hmm. could you tap into that wouldn't naturally fit with what your character currently does on land, essentially? So I think that, you know, we sort of settled at a few different areas where, I mean, a big one that's always going to come to mind, you're out on the water, the big thing that... You know, fits in with water is is fish. You know, fishing under yeah. under the water there. So, deep sea kind of open ocean offshore fishing in some capacity, I think, is just a really really logical and intuitive linking pair there for like sailing and fishing. Very much go hand in hand. I think it's probably important to stress right off the bat. I don't think we'd ever want to talk about anything in terms of like fishing your own or sailing your own kind of fishing trawler type vessel, right? I think there's a lot of mm. stigmas. <laughs> I know we've not really like brought it up yet at all, but um, I guess it's worth mentioning at some point about like pre-existing sailing-esque mechanics that people look at and then maybe get a bit alarmed or concerned with where it's like the fishing trawler is this boat you're on that you've got to perpetually fix up and then the yeah. little mini game quest segment thingy of Bone Voyage on your way to Fossil Island for the first time where it's just kind of watching an interface. And I think even still now, having completed that quest a couple of times, I'm not even 100% sure how that thing like works or why it does the way it does the thing it does. It doesn't. Yeah. It didn't feel particularly satisfying playing that particular sequence yeah. of that quest, sadly. And I think a lot of players who are concerned about sailing oftentimes look at those elements of it and get a bit wary. But hopefully with all the previous discussions we've had about core mechanics and how this works, we'll dispel a lot of those issues and <laughs> fears and concerns there because we've really tried to move far, far away from those those two areas but again the reason i bring up that fishing trawler is because again fishing very logical partnering up with a you know sailing as a companion skill there but i think it's important to stress this would probably look and feel a lot more like you know traditional coastal or you know river-based fishing that you're used to rather than like running around frantically on a ship not really fishing and just yeah whacking planks and tar fixing something up right um yeah. Anyway, it was worth highlighting that, and um, and yeah, just going beyond that, you know, fishing, other things. Well, you know, the gathering skills just in general feel like natural pairings because they're you know much more kind of logical in a way. I think to incorporate with sailing because you're going out and you know finding new locations to gather potentially new types of materials and you know minerals and different kind of um, objects in that in that way. So you know, picking skills like mining. Well, you know, maybe there are different deposits of 
unique kinds of minerals that you only find in the ocean or perhaps it's just a you know mm -hmm. a better way of finding those older ones again mining is a big skill and oh dear i know it's this could be a <laughs> topic that players would love to talk about for a long time and again that's definitely saved for another day about the the nature of the the lackluster forms current gathering and production skills take but you yeah. know we've got to you know tackle each bit one thing at a time and just you know doing little things here and there to help bolster existing skills it also doesn't eliminate the prospect of maybe looking at those skills more in depth in the future in different ways separately just to put that yeah. out there too um but yeah you know this idea of going through and kind of dredging up minerals and materials through a special kind of customized you know netting system or something to sort of dredge up these uh, ores that you can then use and then other things that feel logical i mean you've got huntable birds around the game in a pretty you know, terrible format currently but yeah, there's a lot of seabirds out in the world so maybe there are certain relatively you know inaccessible or hard to reach locations where these seabirds perhaps they go to nest in you know, far distant little jutting out cliff edges and giant rocks formations and things like that and so perhaps you go to mm -hmm. special kind of spots where you can you know target these birds and and hunt them down with the help of your your ship in a unique form of you know bird hunting uh training method there sort of getting some hunter and some sailing um experience sort of resources along the way and another one being, you know, maybe there's some some farming elements too. Another thing that you might find in the ocean are things like coral. And so, mm -hmm. you know, coral is something that uh, you could, I think, quite easily tie into, you know, that unique sort of um, element of sailing that lets you travel there and, you know, do some form of farming that then gathers up coral and then you can turn it into unique things. Um, we've got some pictures for different kinds of jewellery at the minute and, yeah, there's all sorts of things that could come from that as well. But I think the general premise of using some of these existing gathering skills and sort of synergizing them with sailing to offer a little extra dimension, an extra layer to each one of those. So you have like a, a tiny little expansion to each of those gathering skills in a way that hopefully fleshes them out a tiny bit and helps to kind of add a bit more impact to sailing as well. So you're doing these unique interactions that just simply wouldn't exist were they to be on land or somewhere because they just wouldn't logically make any sense. And so they kind of necessitate that act of sailing in order to actually perform in the first place. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it's also important to stress that uh, part of the goal of these skilling activities was to make activities that were better integrated in the game than a lot of the uh, activity mini games that we get these days. Yes, yeah. Um, you know, back in the day when you got a new fish, well, I suppose you didn't get many new fish, uh, but you get, you know, you get a new area to fish in and there'd be fishing spots there and you'd, you know, catch your angler fish or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we've lost a lot of that. We've we're increasingly pushing things behind instances and sort of out of the game world. And what I wanted to do is kind of draw us back into integrating these the, these gathering skills that we have back into the world that, um, you know, that actually exists, that's actually shared with players. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, just like, just like regular fishing, you're going to find, you know, little fishing icons on the map. You go there, there's a, you know, a sparkling fishing spot or whatever it is. Um, and you start fishing and you can see other players fishing you can see you know maybe the players at Catherine fishing as well from from the shores again just to try and keep players in the same game space um and really reduce that mini game feel that uh, we tend to be leaning towards both in the actual activity and where it is as well as the rewards trying to again make sure that we have really direct functions you are given the opportunity to go offshore fishing therefore you catch new fish which has, you know, what you can eat. Um, going into a couple specifics, I won't, probably won't delve too deeply into these. Um, we've got a couple new fishing, uh, new fish food mechanics. Um, for example, some fish, well, <laughs> multiple bites is, would be new to fish, but not new to cooking for sure. Um, but these would be essentially better versions than, uh, than what we currently have. Uh, we have some fish that reduce damages from the next hit taken and other fish that does healing over time. And again, I really want to stress that rewards are not the primary focus. If these rewards are bad, yeah, that, that's, that's all on me. I'm perfectly happy to accept that. Um, uh, but the idea is just to try and give a couple new mechanics, uh, you know, something to vary it up besides this fish uh, just does plus two over the last fish. Um, this is probably going to be increasingly important, uh, especially towards PvP, as we, you know, power creep ourselves probably back into the situation we were in back in 2011-2012, um, yeah. where, you know, everyone's instantly murdering each other. Um, 
which I'm told with the crossies is fun. It's uh, who knows if it's overpowered. It probably is. Do people like that fact? Maybe. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I guess it's just a point to consider like, hey, should we be scaling up some of our food as our weapons are scaling up as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I don't know if you had anything to add there. Uh, no, not too much, I think. That's, um, yeah, just about covered it, especially with PvP. I think you bring up a very good point, which is that that offensive power creep is very clear and very overt and usually much more prominent than any kind of defensive uh, form of power creep <laughs> we get. So that is going to be something that we're definitely going to need to consider because, you know, it's all well and good for, for monsters and PvM and there's quite mm -hmm. a good degree of scalability there, right, in the future. If you get some stronger gear, then... Yeah, sadly, some old content might get a little bit easier, which we've kind of seen already. But hey, at least the future content can just, you know, you can bang an extra thousand hit points on the next big raid <laughs> boss if you really want to, right? And then there you go. That solved the issue of two powerful weapons that have been brought down a notch. But you can't so easily do that for a player with the old 99 HP just kind of sitting there. No. So, yeah, it might be worth thinking about that, you know, very carefully. And it's probably going to be a conversation that's going to come up at some point in related pvp discussions going forward but yeah and you know just yeah. on the topic of like cooking in general again i think there's a lot there that could still be done i think it is a shame i think most people agree that it is just a shame that there's such a a wealth of cooking options but just so little point to so much of it and the fish yeah. that we have in game kind of dominate to the point where it is just this one step one process cooking interaction and everything else is kind of left by the wayside but again like i sort of already alluded to earlier i think you know we can start to take tentative little step towards that a new skill isn't necessarily gonna be able to or have to like solve every problem with every existing skill or area mm -hmm. of the game all in one go but you know it can help sort of point things in in a direction that maybe could you know maybe could be expanded upon in the future just look at those individual skills in isolation some more yeah absolutely um yeah there's not a ton to talk about for the other ones dredging um the idea behind it you just mine faster uh, less XP, more ores. Uh, this will always bring up the conversation, you know, are you then just saturating the economy with the ores? I think, well, PVM does that quite a bit already. Yeah. It'd be nice to put a little bit more power back in the hands of skilling. Um, and if we can't inc <laughs> if we can't decrease PVM drops, then I suppose the only other way is increasing skilling drops. Um, there's a big other conversation that we could probably open about how to make skills more useful again without um, resorting to dealing with like these really easy to acquire drops. Yeah. And both you and I, General Tractor, I think we've both done large conversations on, oh, on yes. this topic. Oh, yes. Far too much. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so best not um, touch too much on that here. Yeah, kind of worms for another day, I think. Yeah. Uh, seabird hunting. Um, again, oh, yeah. For dredging seabird hunting and coral farming these aren't available in the plugin again there just really wasn't time to do it all uh, so the mechanics are kind of nebulous uh, i'm pretty open to whatever they could be i'm sure you could create something pretty interesting anyway so seabird hunting uh essentially the idea you chase down these seabirds uh, kind of like as general tractor mentioned you know maybe you have different mechanics maybe they're sitting around on these rocks maybe you have to chase it down maybe there's this albatross that's going you know uh, yeah. two three tiles per tick and you gotta you have to run it down angle your cannon right and shoot a harpoon at it or whatever um anyway uh the benefit of these guys would be that uh, they would drop these sacred fe feathers which you then burn for fire making and prayer xp uh nothing really complicated there uh and coral farming uh this is something i only this is something you could probably take quite far to be honest um Pretty much my idea of it was that it'd be a little more of an active way of farming, kind of like we already do with um, uh, Tithe Farm in Hosidius. Um, again, don't really have specifics of what it might look like, but the rewards from it would be this coral, which would be crafted into these necklaces, which can be enchanted just like the rest of, rest of your jewelry um, for special effects. Uh, I think you could take this quite far if you really wanted to, and it really depends on how much you know effort you'd want to put into creating uh, new enchanted stuff. Um, right now, I have these pretty four basic effects. Uh, they're nothing, nothing insane, uh, but kind of like we did with silver uh, jewelry before, you could kind of go on quite a big expansion of this. Yeah. Um, yeah, I suppose 
unless you had anything else to add uh we could move on maybe we should talk about charms yeah Given that we're probably at that point eh? absolutely yeah might as well jump to that one could be quite a, a big talking point at least yeah yeah okay well just to really briefly go over them uh probably one of Saline's most impactful at least this version of Saline's most impactful changes would be the addition of a new uh equipment slot it would be a charm slot um and essentially in these different sailing activities you would acquire these charms of different tiers depending on your level of sailing and they would give you pretty standard uh, defense and offensive bonuses uh, you know to slash stab crush ranged magic prayer um, yeah that's the really broad overview uh, did you want to mention anything to kind of kick us off, General Tractor? Sure, yeah. I think it's probably worth just, you know, talking on that point of, like, equipment slots to begin with, right? And say, okay, well, there's one thing that I think has been discussed a lot, which is new skills, since very early on in, in old school's life, and all the different incarnations that new skills could take, and the conversation we've all been having, you know, leading us to this point in time. But it kind of feels like there's another area which is potentially, you know, quite game-changing and impactful, that hasn't really ever had a super in-depth conversation on. And that is some, to do with equipment slots, or at least the idea of, you know, a new equipment slot and what that means. And so I think at the end of the day, when you really, you know, when you start boiling it down, okay, what is the purpose of this and what are you trying to do with a new skill? Skills oftentimes struggle to really find what that, what that new unique reward output looks like right as we mentioned a few mm -hmm. times it can be you know a bit nebulous you could quite easily you know change and kind of mold different kinds of rewards to fit whatever purpose you want if you really attempted to um but a lot of times skills kind of struggle figuring out what is that selling point right like as much as i think both of us can keep saying rewards are kind of an aside and i do still stand by that because i do think they are I'd, much rather make sure mm -hmm. the solid fundamentals of mechanics and gameplay of a skill is what takes priority but naturally as Noam said earlier rewards are really important to people and I think when you look at especially recent years leading up to where we are today this idea of I think power creep becoming gradually more acceptable as time goes on I think a lot of players have understood that there's there's only so far you can take those kind of niche side grades and perpetual iterating upon the same little similar things again and again before it gets yeah. a tad bit stale or it doesn't quite make a new piece of content compelling or alluring enough. And so that's where mm -hmm. equipment slots, or specifically a new equipment slot as a conversational piece, right, becomes really interesting. Because, right, what are you always doing when you're releasing a new item in an old area, right? Like, if you're releasing a new chest piece it's like okay i'm having to weigh up the pros and cons of how is it going to compete against bandos and all this stuff right like in the past i guess especially recently players have kind of decided well let's just power creep straight over that right and, and then mm -hmm. incorporate it by upgrading it into torva um but it's like that's a conversation that's going to always take place every single time any new update comes out for any item in any existing equipment slot it's like how is it balanced against everything else that already exists there how are you kind of weighing at the pros and cons of what are you trying to retain, maintain, what are you devaluing, and how do you find that reward space? And that's where that idea of just a new equipment slot is just quite interesting, just at a bare minimum, right? Like kind of new skill or otherwise, new equipment slot is a very interesting conversation that, again, I, I feel like hasn't really been tapped into quite enough just yet to really figure out if it's, you know, suitable or acceptable for old school or not. Um, because it does do one thing that completely eliminates all of those other points I just brought up, which is if you have a new equipment slot, there's absolutely no competition with what's going in it. Because by definition, mm -hmm. everything that goes in it is best in slot, even if it's just you know <laughs> temporarily. So that's kind of intriguing because if we're in a game that's about trying to you know juggle the balance between retaining some degree of nostalgia and the relevancy of old pieces of content and certain old items and equipment then actually one way you can weirdly do that more effectively is if you have this whole area, this entire slot, which doesn't have to be replacing anything old or anything you already have, right? It's not devaluing any old gear. It's just chilling there alongside it. So there's yeah. something quite interesting about that that makes you know a new equipment slot actually really quite you know lucrative, for lack of a better term, for old school and the potential that it then provides the game going forward because obviously once you have a new equipment slot well then 
that's something you can keep coming back to, right? And so to sort yeah. of bring this back to, you know, new skills in sailing, like it's in figuring out that, you know, what should be that compelling reward output? Clearly, again, as Noam said, there are going to be a good chunk of players who want a compelling reward from a new skill. Otherwise, they're just not going to be interested in that new skill. So how do you provide that compelling reward that is distinct and, you know, you can see it stand apart from everything else in game that comes with this new skill that people are absolutely going to want, that tangibly offers you an upgrade to your account, no matter what kind of account you are or no matter what kind of gear you currently have um, and how do you do it in a way that's really kind of simple and intuitive and logical. And I think, you know, an equipment slot, a new one, it kind of does that, right? Like it ticks a lot of boxes in that regard. Of course, the big one is always going to be that element of, you know, <laughs> at what point do you go too far, I guess, right? This mm. is, it's, it is treading, just like new skills in general, a new equipment slot is treading into some uncharted territory. And again, I couldn't say just how many people would be excited by that or how many people would be very scared and off-put by that. There are absolutely yeah. big concerns that would be valid to bring up, which is the nature of just unfettered power creep. That's one thing that you don't want to completely go into, right? You don't want to just start offering insane jumps and leaps in in power levels which starts trivializing old content so you want to step anywhere you go cautiously regardless of which direction that is um, but yeah a, a new equipment slot especially along with a new skill I think presents a lot of very interesting and exciting opportunities that you probably just couldn't do through any other conventional means so I think a bare minimum I'm quite you know excited to see this being presented alongside everything else mostly just to see where you know, people lie on on the on the discussion yeah. to see how people respond to it, to see if something quite bold and big, which is you know a big kind of unique reward system essentially, rather than just like a reward item itself, but an entire system of reward output is something players are interested in when it comes to new skill discussions, or you know if this is straying too far or not. So that's something I'm quite fascinated in seeing. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, and as you mentioned, it opens up an enormous amount of design space. Uh, you think of all the design, all the work we've put into our current equipment slots, um, and suddenly you open up a whole new one that you can do almost anything with. Uh, you can have you know quests that contribute to it or different skills as as we have here. Um, and it's always then a question of how do you fill it? What exactly is this slot for? Um, and this is something that went through various iterations. Uh, General Tractor, I think you saw some of my earlier iterations, for example. Yeah. Um, I think the first one, which I was pretty conservative with it, I essentially said, well, we have a bunch of jewelry that has charges. What if these things hold jewelry charges? So you, um, you have this charm of dueling, and you put rings of dueling into it. And it essentially just, you know, helps with storage a little, a little bit more makes it so you're not constantly dealing with these you know breaking pieces of gold and silver um and yeah it's always hard to settle on a certain idea uh because you're always debating between is this too much or is this too niche or is this overpowered or is this underpowered is this not going to inspire any further ideas we ended up with this iteration more or less because it was relatively it, it's useful it's practical, it's something that people would chase, and it's pretty simple and straightforward. Um, you get plus bonuses to your offenses and defenses. Uh, that's probably the most fundamental equipment slot thing there is. Yeah. yeah. Um, but at the same time, it is an entire new equipment slot, and if you look at every single one of our current equipment slots, there's so much variety, and so, so many interesting niches that can be filled with it. Um, and for the purpose of this um, of this presentation, we decided to tone it down. Let's keep it simple. Let's keep it grounded. Um, and so you'll notice I <laughs> I lean towards some of those more interesting capabilities with some of the prayer charms, like this this charm of um, this charm of ardor, which essentially rapid heal, rapid restore, protect item, and preserve prayers no longer drain pray, drain prayer points. Um, little things like that that you can play with. And I'd love to see this further explored. Um, all, all we've done here is touch the absolute surface. Um, but I, this is kind of where, and it's a bit of a cop out, but this is where I'd love to see community ideas uh, for yeah. what would fit in this charm slot. 
yeah no absolutely i think there's as, as we keep saying there's a lot of untapped potential here in terms of how far you could go and again it's the kind of thing where you can start very conservatively if you want to because again by definition of it being new and an unused slot everything you put in there is at least for a while going to be the best at what it does so it would be just yeah. you know a de facto un, undisputed um best in slot so just like people currently chase down that you know squeezing down one extra strength bonus and they're willing to shell out millions of gp for it <laughs> on some obscure item or a ring or whatever glove um kind of piece you can totally envision the same thing happening here right like again i don't think this version even has um any like overt strength bonuses associated with it we've just started with no i think it's yeah just sort of like accuracy defense because that feels like a nice you know relatively uh, dare i say sort of like tame but still tangibly useful starting point yeah. right and then again you could totally see how you could leapfrog off of that right like hey a new boss comes out maybe you access it through sailing or maybe not who knows and that thing just has a, a new charm drop uh, item associated with it and that thing just has a, a strength bonus on it awesome cool yeah maybe there's some other process you can go through perhaps involving some skilling methods where you can actually improve that charm and turn it into a plus two strength bonus so it's like oh cool okay so now there's some interesting combat maybe some sailing component and some non-combat things all kind of tying together we can start building out these kind of um you know useful equipment slot bonuses sort of slowly but surely uh, involving you know different pieces of content where they're most needed or most warranted and yeah start tapping into other areas i think especially because again this iteration of it doesn't really tap into the the non-combat side of things uh, almost at all really mm -hmm. um so there's like a whole other area where again like traditionally i've been quite outspoken in the past about definitely wanting to see more empowerment of the traditional non-combat skills in many different ways and i think you know other parts of this sailing skill already kind of does that through more natural organic ways but i think you could totally see that in a in a more overt reward capacity with some you know skilling effect charms right like things that bolster skilling either in a again starting in a basic way or you know applying more you know, resources when you're doing gathering skills or allowing you to process something a different way or you know just offering different kinds of non-combat effects and again each one of those is just going to exist in and of itself as a best in slot until it gets something else coming along but i think you could very quickly start to see how the pieces fall into place when you have that just empty equipment slot that's not having to be you know, you're not having to weigh up the pros and cons of every other item that already exists in game as to whether or not this new thing is worth it. Because, you know, mm -hmm. every time you tap into a new area for the first time, it would just stand on its own and be worth it. So for a very long time to come, as long as you were careful with how you implement new things and where you put them, you'd have like a lot of you know, good, strong, potent and desirable rewards that could slowly trip into the game over quite a long period, right? Like over many, many years to come. And you know, it would technically serve as quite a big potential weight off of the shoulders of like the old school team where they probably rack their brains every time they come along with you know a new boss that they're pitching right like there's mm. you know on the cusp i guess we're looking in the future now at the time of recording this at some big like desert treasure 2 related things and i think there's like four new bosses maybe to come there and they're talking about new yeah prayer books and new items and all sorts of things i, I imagine that's going to be a bit of a challenge you know again as always is the oh, case yeah. presenting that back and forth with the players figuring out how strong an item do you want what is it rivaling what is it going to be making obsolete what is it going to be going against weighing at the pros and cons you know having a new equipment slot for that would be oh man such a big relief probably for them he's like <laughs> here's a big new boss oh yeah by the way it drops like a cool you know uh, dragon charm whatever it gives you like a boost mm -hmm. against dragons when fighting them it's like okay cool that's like a best in slot that's going to synergize with my dragon hunter lance and my current kind of dragon slaying setup so yeah that's awesome i want that it's just straight up and yeah you could do little things like that for a very long time to come without needing to have like a big lengthy back and forth about every little minute upgrade or side grade or niche usage of things that we're currently kind of you know well and truly in the pit of yeah i, I think you've well just with that statement there you've instantly got every single j mod on the side of this skill so <laughs> makes my job easier yeah, potentially yeah <laughs> yes yeah, so just just to wrap up this this piece before we move on um, I, I do want to very explicitly state that all these numbers are pretty much meaningless, right? Yeah. Um, again, it takes a developer five seconds to change these and, and implement um, them into the game. Uh, so yes, maybe it's underpowered. Maybe it's not that exciting. Or maybe it's way overpowered. Maybe it, <laughs> maybe we've gone way too overtuned and, yeah. and the best these charms should give is a, is a plus one to, a, I don't know, run energy per hour. Um, these are all things that 
will need to be played with and will need to be discussed within the community. Uh, so really just, you know, don't set your hearts on, um, on the tables that you saw in the overview because um, it, it will change. I, there's there's no chance of me getting it perfect the first round. <laughs> sure. And and once again, as I already mentioned before, and I'll I'll say it again, right? Like with rewards, as Gnome says, everything is very changeable very easily. If you as an individual individual maybe listening to this, like, oh, I don't like the idea of that particular kind of bonus, or you know what, I don't even like the idea of equipment slots. You know, make your voices known by all means, right? Like it's uh, mm-hmm. I think it's really important to get that kind of feedback and express it. But uh, again, like I said earlier. You know, don't completely throw the baby out with the bathwater on that one, right? If this is like one yeah. step too far for you where you don't feel super comfortable on this kind of reward area, it's like, cool, you know, scale the whole thing back, focus on different areas, explore different avenues. I think, again, there's there's so many other options you can look at. This is one where we feel like, you know what, there's a lot of genuine strong potential here. We know there's also the potential for a bit more controversy on top of the usual new skill oh, controversy yeah. that exists anyway. Um, but, you know, quite frankly, a new skill, as I just said, is built in with controversy. So why not try and <laughs> explore all those avenues while you're here anyway, right? So just, you know, yeah. remain open-minded is all I'd say. And if you don't like it, absolutely articulate those thoughts and feelings. You know, give that feedback. Say what you perhaps like to see instead or what bonuses you think could exist if you do like it. Um, I'll be really curious as I read through as many comments like that as possible anywhere. You want to share those things and, yeah, just, uh, just yeah, keep open-minded about these sort of things. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, let's move on to treasure hunting, I suppose. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, this is one, well, one of the many pieces where you could go in infinite directions fleshing this out, and, and we really haven't. Um, it's, again, if you're going to have a sailing skill, it's like you can't not have treasure hunts, just like you can't not have naval combat, uh, or you can't not have, you know, fishing on the water. Uh, treasure hunts just go so closely hand in hand with it. Yeah. Um, the general idea, though, yeah, they're clues on water. Let's let's not beat around the bush. That's that's all it is. Um, which um, I, and I mentioned this in the overview. You know, one one thing that um, is problematic with the clue expansions we've done before is that we've diluted the reward tables. And so you know, even if we create a whole new slew of really cool looking cosmetics, uh, we're not going to be able to put them into our current treasure trail system or at least we'd have to i don't know do what we've done before i suppose with creating new tiers of clues or i don't know some sort of variations um and that feels a little bit limiting so pretty much treasure hunts would allow us to create a whole new slew of um uh, of rewards of cosmetics of uh, uh of different clue types for you to for you to puzzle out or more uh more recently, we just rely on Runeland, I suppose. <laughs> oh, <dear>. um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's you know, we should probably have this this conversation because we talked a lot about it uh, over bar. Oh yes, we but did. one of the yeah one of the fundamental problems of creating any new crazy cool puzzle is that people are just going to rune light it away anyway, and before rune light, they would just wiki it uh, away anyway. So you know, there's there's only so many ways you can win. If you want to create a really cool puzzle, it has to be pretty much dead simple, or you're so incentivized to use these external programs that it's kind of meaningless to do it to begin with. Like the light puzzle, the light puzzle boxes are cool, but what, what percentage of players has actually manually done it? Yeah. Less than 1%? <laughs> most of us have probably attempted it one time and thought, okay, that was interesting. Rune light, take the wheel. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And like, I, I get it. You know what? After I've done a puzzle once, how many times do you really want to do that sliding box again? Yeah. It it gets pretty, you know, monotonous. Um, but yeah, at the same time, it it really does kind of limit, you know, how much creativity you can have with these, with these different puzzles without just wasting dev time entirely. Um, anyway, that was something <laughs> that was a big conversation when we were developing Bard. Oh boy, yes, it was. Trying to do our own version of... Uh, of puzzles um but yeah that's simply to say that treasure hunts should probably have fairly simple puzzles i created one in the overview which is pretty much like which i thought was kind of neat it's essentially like your first right click or left click option um and they were placed around a map as they would be placed in the real game world so um uh except the except the treasure map wouldn't be an actual map besides these left click options 
So there is exchange. There's a little word exchange, a little dot where that would be. Another word um, bank uh, with another dot. And you just kind of to triang triangulate, I suppose, yeah. map out mentally where this place was, which, of course, well, if you're talking about, um, you know, exchange and bank, you're probably looking around the Grand Exchange. Um, so anyways, yeah, not to not to settle too much on like specific uh, clue types, um, but that was just one of the, you know, ideas we've tossed around uh, among that being um you know this idea of this ghostly pirates vessel that maybe you have to chase down and there's other variations of it we've we've thought of as well like i don't know maybe you have to kill him maybe you have to well who knows what else maybe you have to talk to him um yeah uh, that general idea of having to chase down uh, another vessel you know again kind of uh, invoking those basic sailing techniques but um being able to use them well yeah, for sure. Again, um, that sort of Viking longship chasing down some sort of plunder on the seas vibe, I think, yeah. has come to mind there. Another thing I really liked about the potential here for the uh, kind of treasure hunting stuff and, you know, clue scrolls at sea. I think, again, you might have included a little um, clip of this in your, your video overview. Um, but the idea of using sort of like, uh, you know, mechanical puzzles, right? Like embracing the side of these sailing mechanics, being able to you know, move in a certain way, it's a direction and speed and whatnot, and then having, you know, the actual clue itself effectively being, you know, performing a certain kind of sailing maneuver. I think that's a really interesting mm -hmm. one, because again, that kind of circumvents that whole rune light puzzle problem solved automatically issue for you by kind of, um, you know, sure, there'll, there'll probably be some assists. I mean, there's a million different overlays and buttons oh, and yeah. things that tell people when to exactly do things, but I think that slightly reduces that when there's, I think, you know, that kind of more in integrated, uh, you know, mechanical centric form of gameplay, rather than just being like a single static interface every time where you look at it and you have to try and process the information and solve it all in like your head in that one go, and then it's just instantly solved by you know clicking on a spot or speaking to an NPC kind of thing. So that I think makes yeah, it's... sailing themed and sailing oriented treasure hunting quite interesting because there's a lot of scope for that too, just sprinkling in little things where you perform unique actions, just sort of organically and naturally while at sea which you would be i think just sort of subtly inclined to just want to do yourself and not feel like you have to resort to plugins or external things so mm -hmm. yeah i think that's quite a nice um part of it and again just like i think clue scrolls in general it's um i think it was the the recent one the i'm, I'm not gonna remember the exact statistic off my head now but i think when the, the recent poll that just closed that did a little bit more investigative work in terms of like new skills and asking people what content they liked in game i think clue scrolls or treasure trails was its own category like do you what are some of your yeah. most enjoyed things i'm pretty sure that came back like over a third or maybe close to like 30 to 40 percent i think oh, wow. going from memory i might have um, i should have had that statistic at hand rather than just pulling out of thin air but i think <laughs> fingers crossed it was somewhere in that region um i mostly remember that just because there was some blooming reddit memes talking about the difference between <laughs> how many people enjoy clue scrolls versus <laughs> pvp and it's like if the clue scrollers just rose up they could just smack all the pvpers with their spades <laughs> they outnumber them three to one so just rise up <laughs> clue scrollers um, that made me chuckle anyway so that's why it's in my mind there's like you know a sizable yeah. portion of players who speak out and say yeah they, they like clue scroll gameplay right it's not just like a little side activity for them it's like a, you know, a proper good chunky piece of the game that they really enjoy and i think again all the reasons you mentioned why it's challenging to just dump more into the existing clue system without potentially causing unwanted you know issues there and problems having this sort of system exist alongside it i think um to sort of like facilitate it and maybe there'd be a little bit of you know interaction back and forth in some capacity who knows again much mm -hmm. like many other parts of this skill and idea there's a lot of kind of sky's the limit kind of uh, you know situations you know only really restricted by your imagination on many fronts but uh, yeah i can see a lot of interesting and just fun little perhaps even more like distraction and diversionary elements to this possibly um where you could perhaps have yeah. a more like sporadic style of gameplay because i guess that's something we haven't spoken too much about the idea of you know things occurring more kind of naturally that you maybe go and do a little bit of and then maybe go back and resume what you were doing beforehand i could see this maybe filling a bit of a niche like that much how clue scrolls currently do for certain combat and skilling elements so yeah yeah absolutely and, and just kind of wrap up your comment in a nice bow i think this yeah, I guess what we're kind of peeling more for is a little more mechanical engagement with this system of clues than cog cognitive engagement. Yeah. Because, 
yeah, I mean, <laughs> and it's coming for every single aspect of the game. Uh, but cognitive engagement is quickly being overtaken by different plugins. Uh, for better or worse, that's that's up to you to decide. Um, but it would be nice to have, you know, more clues that actually involved some sort of engagement, doing something, rather than just, you know, mindlessly looking at arrows and, and clicking where the arrows tell you to. Um, which again, I don't think there's anything fundamentally wrong with that. It's more just that it feels like a wasted design opportunity when you've created this cool puzzle, but then it's completely taken away by a plugin. Um, I have no problem with clicking arrows on, on these sliding puzzles. Uh, I think, <laughs> I suppose yeah. ironically, my problem is more that the sliding puzzle existed. <laughs> yeah, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, as for rewards, really you expect it to be like any other uh, clue rewards. Uh, whatever cosmetics the, the team feels like cooking up. Uh, it's also a great opportunity to do some cosmetic changes to your boat. Uh, we've, I think General Tractor earlier, you very briefly talked about, um, you know, boat, uh, um, boat equipment, essentially. Yeah. And that's been kind of prominent in a couple of different uh, sailing, sailing skill proposals out there, is the idea of being able to upgrade, upgrade your ship, essentially have uh, its own little equipment tab or equipment screen, and be able to throw stuff on it to upgrade it. Um, we didn't really touch on that for this initial proposal of the skill uh probably primarily because it's just it's a little too deep of a system for your very utter basics of a skill not that it's something that we shouldn't explore it was just one step too many to start off with i think yeah um but yeah i played with a little visual with this one where you get these different ships um uh, with different um uh, what do you call it with different sails uh, you have, you know, one for uh, Verak, one for Falador, one for, for Zuck, which, oh, we'll get back to that, one for a champion's yeah. cape and, and one for, you know, your classic pirate skull and bones. Um, and this is also where you can introduce, um, uh, kind of integrate sailing with a lot of other things that you already do. For example, maybe once you've completed the Grandmaster Combat Achievements, which I have not done and will never do. Yeah, same. Um, <laughs> once you've done that, maybe that's when you unlock this this really cool um, Zuck sail. Um, yeah, and Champion's Cape sail, maybe once you've achieved the Champion's Cape. And there's just a lot of opportunity for really fun cosmetic integration with sailing. Um, uh, that pretty much gives you a similar level of flexibility and customization as you do your regular character. Uh, so then it's just a nice little appeal to my strong fashionscape senses. That's all <laughs> That's all this really is. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I don't know if you had anything else to mention on treasure hunting or else we can, can move on to I'm not that's covered uh, the last there. bits. Yeah, well, I mean, we've already talked about this pretty much in full, but we might as well reiterate it, because this is New Islands and Expeditions. Um, yeah, I don't think I have much more to add, just just to summarize that, yes, uh, New Islands are an essential part of sailing. Um, I, You know, the, the community can come up with an infinite number of ideas of what this looks like. And again, this is a very much a cop-out answer. Uh, this is me saying I didn't have time. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have the will to do it. <laughs> because I certainly can create new islands. I, I simply didn't. Um, but at the same time, I think it is important to say that our focus is on the basic sailing mechanics. And if we, if I were to create too many cool-looking island designs, that would probably distract, uh, distract us away, distract the entire conversation away, uh, from what I think is the most important part of sailing, which is sailing itself. Yeah. And this goes doubly for the overall idea of random generation or expeditions. Um, in the overview, I put a couple little pictures of some stuff that I've semi-procedurally, semi-manually generated in Blender. Uh, it's a little program I created uh, almost a year ago now uh, called RS Next Gen. Um, it was pretty much just a, it was like a couple week project. Uh, where I just wanted to try and use this system called geometry nodes in Blender to essentially program uh, some level of procedural or random generation. And the products that it turns out can look pretty cool. Um, it requires quite a bit of manual, manual manipulation, um, but that was, that was more or less my appeal to the idea of random generation. 
is it possible in old school? I think that's a really big, a really big talk to- topic because mm. because so many people talk about randomly generated areas, and it, it's kind of like the it's kind of like the holy grail where people see this thing as uh, infinite new content that you know once once this gets introduced into the game, you'll never play the rest of RuneScape. Uh, <laughs> and uh, this kind of goes back to what I was saying before about just. Um, just pure wish making to be honest uh there are limits to what the developer team can do uh and i've thought of various iterations of how this random generation could work i do believe it can work i but the number of years that you would be looking at to try and pull this off it would be extraordinary mm. i think it's really important to say that how long do you want to wait for a new skill? Are you willing to wait five years? Because you might, but I'm betting 95% of other people aren't. Um, and so if for the next five years, we re- receive minimal content updates and are constantly being told the sailing skill, it, it's coming, it's gonna be great. You guys just have to hold on. The game probably won't survive that, or won't survive that very well. Um, it'll become the most memed thing ever as well, which the J-Mods would not be able to stand. Oh, um, so <laughs> in short, I think it's possible. Um, I imagine it would more be a system of, it wouldn't look like Minecraft, where you know you approach a new chunk, chunk loads. It would, if anything, I could see it being something like, uh, let's say 10 new islands are generated each week or e- every other week. And they're implemented into the game just for that period of time before you know server shuts down for game update uh new islands are generated and those previous 10 islands are then replaced with these new 10 ones um new 10 ones new 10 islands yeah that's that's the closest thing i could see to us having some degree of random generation but then the quality of that random generation scales uh, scales proportionally to how much development time is put into it you can have random generation that is as weak as say like minecraft classic if you if you've ever picked up that game and tried it it's yeah. you know it's neat enough i suppose it's a neat experiment but it's not really a game um or you could have it as strong as current minecraft which is like you know extraordinarily impressive so it really depends on you know how good of a product are you are you demanding and how long are you willing to wait for it yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'd, I'd echo a lot of what you just said there and, yeah, expand upon it some more and reiterate where I think, as you say, like sort of tempering expectations and, and really thinking about what could be done in what kind of time scale. I guess I feel like I also have to like really explicitly mention the other thing that always gets brought up with this when you're talking about random generation, when you talk about sailing, and inevitably it's like dungeoneering comes back into the fold, right? Like that's the conversational yeah. point that so many players point to for better or for worse, right? Um, like on one part of this, talking about, you know, as no mentions about dev cost and time, um, I don't have exact figures or anything, but I'm fairly certain that dungeoneering as a skill, as a piece of content, I use skill in like air quotes there, um, <laughs> you know, as a piece of content, was in in development for like a very long period of time. I'm talking like, years, yeah, I'm I pretty think. sure it was years plural, and that was with a fairly extensive team working on it. Um, Mm -hmm. through the whole time there, right? And what they managed to come up with was, you know what, in my opinion, a a really solid piece of gameplay. I think there were some genuinely fantastic gameplay elements to that. Um, But obviously, it's also littered with a huge number of issues there. Um, But yeah, even still, with like something of that scale and scope, they managed to accomplish, you know, a, a good deal, but it took a very long time to do. And even then, perhaps didn't quite implement everything in the way that would have been ideal, especially not for a skill. Mm-hmm. I think the first thing to, again, stress, as we did at the, like very early on at the beginning of this entire ramble and kind of like bookend it now, I guess, with is I think a lot of people who think of sailing and are generally positive about it are probably already sold on the idea of it being, oh, yeah, it's going to come with some kind of new random generated dungeoneering at sea style system with like infinite replayability. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And the amount of people who are probably not sold on it and are instantly dismissive of it are like, I don't want to just have dungeoneering at sea. That sounds awful. So I think it's really important to highlight that. It's like, okay, if we're doing a sailing skill, much like we spent this whole time discussing and focusing on, 
we've got to make sure we have the basics, the fundamentals and the core mechanics that make it look, feel and play like an actual skill. That has to be mm -hmm. the thing that takes precedent. It's got to be the most important part of it. All of these kinds of things still, I will say right now, super exciting to me, right? Like again, I'll be oh, very yeah. critical of Dungeoneering. It was also one of my favorite pieces of gameplay, actually. I kind of came back mm -hmm. to the game for a bit after leaving during the mass exodus of the moody removal and free trade back in late mm -hmm. 07, early 08. And I sort of dabbled with the game again um, sometime after Dungeoneering's release. And man, I actually, I really loved it. It was a very odd way of implementing a skill because it really wasn't one, but the gameplay itself, pretty solid. Mm -hmm. I'd totally be down for, you know, really deep randomly generated components that have good degree of scalability so low levels can take part high levels can take part there's a broad range of content it interacts with all your different skills in a number of different ways it gives a new meaning and purpose to lots of different things and i think this is a perfect you know avenue to do that where a sailing skill could be one part of a number of different skills that you use in this kind of separate activity right like expeditions could be kind of its own activity that just happens to encompass a lot of different skills sailing included uh, and, yeah. you know, whether that takes a more dungeoneering -y form where maybe you kind of scale things down a bit in, in scope and have to have things a little bit more, you know, restricted rather than very loose and open weave. Or, again, specifics are, you can, you know, speculate and talk to the cows come home for that one. It really can. It's mm -hmm. that you could get absolutely lost in deciding, you know, what kind of exciting encounters you might, you know, come up, come up against and how they could be implemented and in what way. I think the point is that for kind of random generation, it's really cool, it's really awesome. I think at some point, if a sailing skill were to exist, it would probably be kind of expected in some capacity yeah. by a lot of players at some point. But it's really important, we stress from the outset, that if we do some form of sailing skill, if it's ever to pass a poll, which again, this is the ever imperative and important question that will be present over us at all times, looming there like a big dark cloud as we discuss new skills going forward. It, it's you know it's going to have to be doing enough things that get enough people on board to hit that magical seventy percent now threshold. Um, and I think in order to get there, we're going to have to really you know keep in 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 line with what a skill is trying to do and highlight that a sailing skill can't just be randomly generated it's a mini game not a skill all these kinds of criticisms that we've seen before with dungeoneering and we've repeated again lots of times over with mm -hmm. sailing discussions in the past right we've got to make sure we highlight it as hopefully we've kind of done here hopefully enough people will see that that it's absolutely you know can be an important part of the discussion but the people who already like that idea they're already sold on it and the people who don't yeah. are massively put away from, um by it so we need to make sure that we're not just putting people off unnecessarily with something that doesn't you know, need to belong there at the core of a skill, right? So I think that's a, a big important thing for the expeditions and the randomly generated component. Lots of awesome ideas. Would absolutely love to see, you know, the old school team go wild on that. I think I even remember seeing a quote from perhaps even Mod Ash himself years back, like dating from like the early sailing skill discussions. I think even he said he was quite interested from like a developmental standpoint, as you know, from a, a tech mm -hmm. side what kinds of interesting systems you could come up with there, you know, sailing around and generating different things. That sounds like a, you know, fun technical challenge for someone of his mind or anyone else on the team these days, right? So I imagine a lot of the developers mm -hmm. would actually, you know, relish an opportunity to really sink their teeth into systems like that uh, and create something new and engaging and genuinely very, very fun that a lot of people can optionally interact with. And again, another word to really stress here, optional, the big problems with Dungeoneering, as yeah. already said, it wasn't optional. There was just one thing, yeah. it existed. It was a mini game, you had no choices. Got to make sure anything like this exists it has to be an option. It's got to be a choice. It can't be the only thing. So that's why it's sort of important to exist on the side there. I think going back just a step as well, because hopefully that's covered <laughs> the random generated expeditions quite a lot. <laughs> the uh, the islands portion again. I think you know much the same way. Once again, echo what Noam said. And both of these two segments are things where again I'd look back at my own previously mentioned you know that 2016 pitch I did of sailing and a lot of the people was like that was essentially like exclusively what i focused on for a sort of reward output because mm. that's where my brain was still at, at the time i think a lot of people's still are you know to this day and that's no you know <laughs> no not not to knock anybody because quite frankly yeah i've been sitting in that mindset for a long time myself and it's difficult to kind of get around that but i think you know you you've got to look at it in the way hopefully we presented the rest of this skill which is sailing if it's going to be sailing let's focus on the unique features that, that brings to us and yeah logically there's absolutely going to be some new islands to go to. 
what kind of fun new places yeah. could we go i mean again you can imagine anything you want right maybe we take our first tentative steps into the eastern lands maybe we head north and explore a little bit of some icy lands of acheron maybe we go south and just have some you know random new portion of the southern hemisphere that we've never seen before and has never been discussed who knows right like there's mm -hmm. it literally is just endless potential there right like anything you could do you could absolutely come up with and produce but again technically all of that stuff could be done with or without a sailing skill right like it doesn't yeah. necessitate it so that's one thing that could be perhaps considered as well that i think would be worth spending a little bit of time on maybe as a community you know the dev team working on it if you think of the new islands it, it might be interesting to try and figure out okay what sort of ways thematically narratively even mechanically would these islands exist and maybe the reasons why they might exist why you might only be able to sail to them perhaps maybe there's some in you know new islands in some specific locations of the world that are just infested with sea monsters and no conventional sailors want to go mm. there like absolutely no one from the charter ship system will be willing to travel there to, with you so it only takes the yeah. most intrepid sailor willing to embark on that voyage themselves to try and get there and you know maybe there are other different you know narrative reasons you might come up with as to why there's no form of teleportation spell that takes you there maybe you are you know literally a kind of exploring an uncharted place for the first time maybe no wizard or warlock has you know sufficiently spent enough time mm. there to have devised a magical spell that would tra transport you back to the place the point is i think there's i think it's worth spending at least a little bit of time with whatever we come up with whatever the team the community what have you decide on you know some sort of new island new landmass new location to visit because i think inevitably that almost certainly will come with like the launch of a sailing skill i think there would need to be somewhere new that you travel to that's yeah. just static it's on the map you can see it but you can't access it yet and i think it's a good thing to think about reasons why you can't access it and why it makes sense to access it via a sailing skill and not via other means because i think that could end up creating just a more cohesive and interesting landmass as a result and maybe generate some new interesting content and reward ideas as a result of that consideration too yeah, and actually, some, something you mentioned at some th at some point triggered a core memory of mine yeah. uh, of of a thought that it's it's a bit of a roguish thought, I suppose. Um, I imagine Jagex would have me dispose of it. Oh yeah. Um, but but both you and I have played with a little bit of map making private server tech, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, really fun program to play with. I've never played a private server. Just just in case any any JMods yeah, are same, watching, same. don't don't ban my accounts. <laughs> I can't speak for General Tracker, though. No, no, I, I don't. That's might... not for me, thanks. You've mentioned Moper Escape before. I, I'm pretty sure. I mean, maybe, but, you know, that was a long time ago, okay? Uh, that was a long time ago. I was a kid, all right? We all make mistakes. <laughs> Come on. Right, <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> but, but anyway, an idea I had a while ago, when I was much more into, into doing that sort of map making, um, was this idea of, like, what if Jagex could crowdsource maps? Yeah. Like what if, and they've talked about this like really briefly at various points. Um, you know, what if the players could get their hands on a bit of uh, a bit of map making technology that they that they currently use? Could players make realistic maps for old school RuneScape? Um, and yeah, I, I well, I mean, part part of this is just me wanting an official map making program, so I don't have to use the current one because it's it's kind of it, it's it's good, but it's bad at the same time. It's a bit clunky. Um, absolutely is um but yeah i mean if you wanted to instead of randomly generating islands what if you had what if you crowdsourced a, a ton of different island designs from players it would just be i mean it's proc it's impractical uh, yeah. <laughs> i'll be honest it's it's not the greatest thought um but yeah it was just i don't know it would there's something about that general idea of involving the community so intimately uh, with your design of a new skill that you could generate such excitement by doing that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and it's never the thing I'd recommend for like, you know, uh, creating islands for the, for the main game world, partially just cause you, you have to go through so many levels of quality, um, quality and, and immersion checks to be honest, yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, through, through player creations. Um, and of course, just because players create maps doesn't mean that there's content uh, on those maps yeah, that, that still well. has to be developed. Yeah, I mean, players would uh, quickly outscale the devs in terms of uh, maps versus content uh, pretty pretty fast. If yeah, end up with Zay as an example, I was say we'd end up with a whole bunch of Zayas if we're not careful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it was just a thought that uh, 
yeah, I haven't thought that thought for quite some months, but um, it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> private servers and official private servers are, are probably a conversation to have some time uh, because uh, the stuff always interests me a ton. Um, engaging players with development in a lot more of an integrated way than, than is currently possible, than, than currently making, you know, scuffed skyscraper posts and, um, you know, plugins for a client. Yeah. Yeah, and a special shout out quickly to the old uh, OSRS Maps subreddit as well. You can see a lot of very talented oh, yeah. and creative folks out there who, you know, just for the most part, you know, the 2D maps, but uh, some really amazing designs. And you can see that there's some there's some passion, passionate people out there who are, have got a real eye for design. And uh, yeah, I think it'd be great. I've always wanted to see the old school team do some things that can help, you know, better harness that creative potential of the community and really hark back to those early days of old school really being immensely community driven with community design and development projects coming through and seeing full scale pieces of content come to the game via community designs which we kind of don't really see anymore but um, you know it's going to be interesting yeah. seeing what the the new skill kind of discussion in general as this as a topic um, what what direction it takes because it could well be I think this one perhaps more than any now any piece of content writing quite some time in many years is probably going to be the one that's going to be the most heavily informed by you know, the widest chunk of players out there. So if ever there is a time to consider how you know player designs and, and community suggestions can be better incorporated, I guess now is kind of it. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, you know, talking about the old days, uh, we're kind of seeing a bit of a return to form in a way uh, because, I, I mean... <laughs> I, I know because it's my own work being advertised uh, and yours as well um, with the recent uh, chat about skills. A sure. lot of skill designs from players have been brought up. Yeah. And I think it, well, well, maybe it's a little, a little self-important for me to say, but it's nice seeing your content featured in that way. Oh, seeing, absolutely. You know, the, the people making your game, being invested in the products that you've created. Um, I think it goes a long way in, in fostering you know, fostering a, a community that's more inspired to create and to engage with the developers, uh, for better or worse. I, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not sure if um, if the developers always want that level of engagement. Oh, but yeah. it's it's really cool to see from a player perspective, at least. <laughs> yeah, there's some good things and bad things that come from that. But uh, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, oh, just, yeah. just like you make the point of, you know, the for, from Jags's perspective, I think the community they foster is the community they feed, and you know, if you if you're willing to feed certain communities, I think you will see it naturally grow, right? Just in terms of the content that's been added into the game, you can kind of see where the game has naturally shifted towards and the kind of play we have now. And, you know, it's very skewed in certain directions. And a lot of that is down to, well, that's the kind of content we get. So naturally, the people who like that content have gravitated towards it. Perhaps the people who didn't have gradually yeah. drifted away. And so, yeah, that's something always worth mentioning, right? Like you can increase the amount of creative potential in the community and, you know, increase the community's willingness and desire to want to participate by actively including the community even more in as many things as you can, right? That's how you get a really involved and impassioned community is by actively incentivizing it. Yeah, and I very much hope that this kind of leans into that aspect. You know, creating a plugin for a skill is something I'm sure many, many people have thought of before, but hasn't ever really been executed. Yeah. Um, and now a new skill is much in, in terms of plugins, it's much like a new game mode in, in that you're invoking um, a, a lot of different and new mechanics. And different game modes of various sorts have been around the uh, around the plugin hub for some time. Um, I guess this is this, you know, I don't, I don't, again, I don't want to sound too self-important, um, but this harkens to a, a bit of a new, a bit of a new thing. What if Runelight um, can be used as a bit more of a platform for presenting player ideas to Jagex? Yeah. It already has for some time, but I don't know. But this, I feel, goes to a bit of a deeper level. Oh, absolutely, it does. Um, yeah. Um, and so I'd just love to see that explored more. And, oh, my goodness, I'm going right back to private servers <laughs> uh, and official <laughs> private servers. But it's it's one of those things that uh, I, I'd love to see at some point, even if it weren't, like, I don't know, public private servers, open private servers uh, that are... Um, facilitated by Jagex, um, a private server development um, development kit. I think that would be really neat. Mm. You'd be able to see players do essentially what I've done, except not have to go through so much of the hassle of creating uh, like the basic functions to get your thing to work. 
Um, for example, um, the hit spots that you see in the plugin, I had to put those hit spots together. I had to tell them how to act, where to appear. Um, if there's multiple hit spots, I had to tell them, you know, how they should arrange themselves. And if if one disappears, where the next one's supposed to be placed. Yeah. It, super basic functions, but it took so much time. And that's partially just because, you know, relatively speaking, I'm, I'm somewhat new to programming still. Um, so that's partially just due to my inadequacy. I'm sure a better developer could have done it in, you know, less than half the time. Um, but at the same time, that would remove such a massive barrier to community engagement and the flourishing of community ideas. And that's not to say it wouldn't have problems. Um, for example, as I've already said, too many community ideas can be a, a bit overwhelming. And um, I imagine the, the bugs that players would be able to discover from knowing too much about the code would be problematic. Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. It just excites you to think about... Um, about what players could do and how much more integrated they could be with the development. No, it really does. I think there's so much, so much, uh, I've said this too many times already today, but like untapped potential in many different avenues. And this is just one of those areas, again, of like community designs and development. And if a few more tools existed, I mean, I can't help but immediately think now, okay, not, not talk about private servers more, but like in that similar vein of if players had tools to create their own little self contained ecosystems, one big thing that players have kind of been clamoring for a lot and you know, it's kind of fallen a little bit by the wayside because of how much development cost it takes. So things like leagues, right? Like these alternate things oh, that yeah. are just sort of like, you know, side shoots off from the main game itself. And that to me feels like, man, there's like a whole area where like, what if you crowdsourced leagues, right? Like what if you could let yeah. players design and develop their own kind of league mechanic and then boom, don't need to worry about spending your regular, you know, Jagex <laughs> development resources on producing something that clearly the player base absolutely adores by and large with how many you know, numbers of players interact with that is huge. It's like the most engaged with gameplay, at least for a brief window when it first comes out. And so, yeah, just imagine the potential there. If you let the players and community's creativity actually run wild and they could just put together their own crazy gimmicks and styles and leagues, relics and all sorts mm -hmm. together and present them back to the to the community or to Jagex themselves and help offload some of that work. But yeah, there's a lot of interesting potential there that I do hope one day we get to see some of it. I know there's probably a lot of reasons why it's going to be a bit of a slim chance. It's a bit of a wishful yeah. thinking kind of situation, sadly. There's a lot of very yeah. practical, a lot of logical, sadly, business and financial and legal reasons and all sorts, as mentioned. But yeah, it would still be a, a very much a, a nice to have wishful thinking. That maybe you know, maybe mm -hmm. there's enough talk about it, enough chatter slowly chipping away. There might be a few people internally at Jagex or in the old school team who might share those thoughts or opinions and also, you know, prod and po poke the right places to get a little bit of the momentum building and the ball rolling. You never know. But uh, yeah, I'd, I'd certainly yeah. like to see it. Yeah, I, I certainly don't deny that, again, it would bring up a number of problems. For example, like, um, you know, it, it allowed Jagex it would give them the room to pull a Bethesda where <laughs> they just release, you know, broken, incomplete, incomplete things or don't invest any of the money they, <laughs> don't give them uh, they get back into development. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, you know, that that always presents a problem as well as, you know, the general idea of diluting the definition of what old school RuneScape is. You know, if we have official private servers, you know, open ones that people can join, suddenly old school runescape is much more of a sandbox it's much more of a of a minecraft yeah um and so you know that uh, there there's there can be many issues that arise from that um you know for example no whenever you talk about runescape yet to start specifying <laughs> which which private server you play or whether you play the official servers or um and, you know of course private servers um can get into a lot of uh well both illegal and you know look down upon practices yeah uh if you've ever looked at minecraft what do they call them minecraft servers i suppose uh you know the monetization systems they use sometimes the way they manage to to strangle money out of you mm. it's um it, it's impressive and terrible uh, and then of course <laughs> as uh as anyone who's done any sort of skyrim modding knows uh, the top mods are usually, uh, well, maybe not the top mods, but close enough are uh, 18 plus. I mean, you don't know if Jagex wants to deal with that in a, oh, in a children's medieval fantasy. Um, and yeah, I mean, 
it, ideas would have to be curated. So someone would have to be doing the curating at Jagex. Someone would have to do the modern monitoring. I, I don't deny that there's a ton of problems, and it, it's completely wishful thinking this this conversation. Uh, but as someone who's you know tapped into the creative side of RuneScape, it's uh, yeah, <laughs> it's it's hard. It it's impossible to say I'd say no. Yeah. I would say yes in pretty much every situation here. Yeah, no, much the same. Anyway, yeah, we we've gone on a on a, on a tangent. Um, we should probably start closing this out because we're well about three and a half ish hours in. Yeah, that sounds and, good. Uh, we've covered all major topics at least. It feels like we've uh, yeah. Well, hopefully, people, anyone who happens to listen to this might agree. They've covered at least something of interest there, and uh, yeah, try to give at least a an insight into our minds and where we're at in terms of thinking of new skills in general and sailing specifically as a skill and all the different topics that come in between that so yeah hopefully there was something interesting to be gained from all this yeah and if we haven't interested you i'm i'm very sorry you're deep <laughs> yeah as deep i mean fair play <laughs> that's really you, too bad you made this far we're like that was awful then well thank you i guess and i'm sorry um yeah, that's what I'm gonna say. <laughs> yes but but to you my dear viewers uh, thank you for for joining us on this little adventure um i again I, I hope you've enjoyed this whole sailing skill thing. If you didn't, you know, feel free to leave feedback. I'm not going to be dealing with feedback forever, as I imagine both General Tractor and I are are pretty tired of the project. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just the way it goes after you've spent enough time on it. Um, but I do, and General Tractor as well, we both try to look at feedback and um, and respond when we can. Yeah. So again, thank you so much. And, and General Tractor, thank you very much uh, yourself for being along for the ride i really appreciated it oh no thank you um um again not the one who's worthy of any sort of praise here i want to really f leave my finishing words and, and notes here on just how like phenomenally amazing a job that you've done here no like genuinely i hope everyone yeah. listening at home realizes like you've made a goddamn playable skill in rune light as a plugin <laughs> like that it that blows my mind and i really hope it blows other people's <laughs> minds too You've, you've done such an amazing job here not just on this but on so many other things as well so yeah I'm going to give you a, a just a small part of praise that you are deserving of quite frankly so much more because you genuinely have like produced some amazing things um, you know including this and other things beyond it so massive props to you I've just been like a tiny fraction of 0.1% of assistance on this this is like yeah 99.9% .9 credit to Mr. No here so that. Ah, I think I would uh, you're not quite being generous enough to yourself but but thank you anyway um yeah so so long hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day um yeah bye yeah, see you later <laughs>